So we are. Oh, so, hello. Hello. Welcome to the tournament. It's going to be fun. I'm KMC. I used to commonly upload on YouTube. Been a little bit of a hiatus due to college, but I've been involved in the community for a little bit on and off, as you can tell. Uh, I'm Fusion. I've been casted for like two tournaments in the past. I've been here for a while. So, yeah, it'll be an honor to cast another tournament with you guys. Jared, do you want to introduce yourself? I'm a chill tournament host. I've been game for a long time. 2018. If they won the most, I'd retire to other people. Um, I feel like most people know me given Fusion and that one can see her help me cast. Finally made it to the casters. Oh my god, setting up the bracket. Forget. Yeah, we're giving her give round of applause. Yay! Go, Cirrus. Woo. Okay, so. Given that. Who do we. Ships that we. Well, probably, probably still right. there's four more bidders, as uh, they want to call them now. I'm not sure why, but I guess that we're go that's what we're rolling with. Great name. I'm very interested to see anybody take advantage of the hyper um, beacon. I doubt we're going to see that much, but it'd be very interesting. If there are some other common ships I'm predicting, it's going to be rail fans, rail orbiters, and deck what deck cannon walls. Question is who uses them is the is uh, the question. I think there'd be a lot of nuke charging too. Ultralight, nuke, something. I'll be interested to see how well um, Rail Orbiters are going to perform in this tournament because um, in the last team tournament, um, there was a duo. I can't remember their names, but they had two Rail Orbiters, and they ripped apart the competition. It was quite Rail brutal. Orbiters is that they are completely garbage in one. And die by their ability. By yourself. True, but this is Cosmeteer, so anything can happen. I suppose yeah, so. I... I definitely, but yeah, having him as a pair or one teammate with a, with a different kind of ship versus having it on its own is going to be a different look. This is our first, uh, what do you call it, um, individual tournament in like a while, right? Yes. Previously, the issue was into counter pick, counter pick loops, which. It's now not going to be a problem in this tournament because we have one ship per person. Yep. One thing that could cause is a bad matchups, but such is life. You got to pick something not too one sided, which that might affect like the use of uh, the or rail orbiters. So you have to have a more general ship design. That's the interesting thing. Incentivized to generalize, especially quite the fall. Speaking of players, I am quite curious to see how Space Cat takes to his uh, to this tournament. At least, even though he's uh, quite well known for all of his um, vast arsenal of vanilla ships, it'll be interesting to see if he breaks out any barges. Reference oldest players. True. A lot of history, a lot of ship of the day wins, and a lot of and a lot more ships to his arsenal. So he's got a lot of options to choose from here. Exciting, huh?
And it seems that Sylph is requesting you, Sarah, change your game name. I'm not sure what's wrong with it, but that's just his opinion. Right now. Oh. Time to use your mod powers. I'll use ask for moderation powers so I can use it for other reasons. Yep, Space Cat, I can respond to this one. I did indeed say barges. And it's true, you've got a lot of them. Actually, I think you have too many ships. You need to stop. Although I am, a little, I am hoping to see at least a few avoiders in this tournament. That would be quite nice. I know um, Nick earlier, um, he told me he had a missile barge in reserve. Not sure when he's going to pop it out, but I'll be excited to see it. I'm doing one lobby this time, right? Yes. Because I'm yeah. just assigning ships. Not worth the trouble, I would say. Oh, yeah, that, that makes sense. Oh, I got a... Do you want me to give you the, the three I'm using, or is it ever going to matter? It's the only three I have on my computer right now. It's only... Huh? I thought it said... I'll just not read the document. No, no, nobody really does. I'm, I'll be surprised if anyone actually bothers. Hold up. No, I swear I read... I read it. Maybe I didn't have reading comprehension. But. Taking too long. Oh, by the way, since Ceres is kind of stalling for time, I mean, he had a month to prepare for this. Like, what the hell are you doing? Uh, we're going to stall with some delightful commentary. Um, KMC, how is your day going so far? It has been an interesting day to say the least i uh i started off trying to fix like i just got a new laptop i uh, transferring files from my old laptop we did make a mistake and uh so yeah, i have a dual install and transferring is a little because i was trying to transfer stuff in a funny way and my brother and i accidentally overwrote a lot of important files so we had to nice. we had to reinstall like everything because like we overwrote a lot of property files, but the, prop the laptops aren't the same type of laptop, so it was going to screw things up. And it's easier than hunting down every changed file. It was easier to just reinstall both my operating systems because I have a dual install. So I had to go through all of that and then transferring files back and forth. And it's still not in the right place, but I barely get everything together in time to get here to compensate. I just installed like Discord and Cosmeteer seconds ago. So it's been an intense day and a half of making mistakes and screwing up my computer. Awesome. And just responding to Slow King, yes, we do tend to insult each other just to pass the time. It works. So as they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. In this case, this being the strategy. Okay, so I did set up the bracket finally. First off, we have Anthrax versus Rope. But just... All right. Uh, who's sending the message first? Uh, oh, okay, never mind. Sarah's is doing it. All right, first match: Anthrax versus Robo Bunny. It's going to be quite a. It's going to be quite a kickoff for the first match of this tournament. Time to wait. Oh, Anthrax is in the game. Let's wait for Robo Bunny. I'm intensely reading the rules right now to make sure we don't have any mistakes when commentating. Oh, I'm just going in blind, honestly. I really don't care. I'm just doing this because I have to. Wait! Oh, I, just want to. I was looking at the March rule. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's only a month late. <laughs> no, no, I said additionally, you'll be forced to use a sing singular loadout. One to five specif specific ships. It says that in the May tournament information document. On the 
in the info third paragraph or second paragraph in info, however you count it. Holy um, shit. As in, you can do one, two tips, but that's still one selection. Yeah, yeah like one loadout. Yeah. Also, it's all, all, all under all, all under 1.5 million. Yeah, you don't get to pick in between the ships. You have to. Yes, yeah, yes. That, that that's what I was that's what I was saying. It's like I have three ships that are all under the 1.5. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. And they would all be played together terribly because they're not built well, but they would all be played together. Also, for reference, Nick Fusion. Sorry, Fusion. Um, I don't get to actually set up the bracket until everybody checks in. Because if I just make the bracket with people that aren't going to show up, then I now have to have an entirely broken bracket, and it's just not going to work. Very well, then. Thank you for the update. Um, apparently, RoboBunny is having slight internet problems because as material. Yeah, it's cool. Marked it off on your bingo. <laughs> yeah. I think somebody <laughs> made... Those cards don't have any bingo cards set up yet. Wait, where's the bingo at? I think somebody did make bingo know. at some point. We got to connect. If anyone's watching the stream, please find us their of uh, the bingo cards because we really want them. All right, Robo Bunny's internet has been fixed. Let's go. Where can we view the uh, the uh, what do you call it? brackets? Are they in announcements or something? Uh, bracket is highly set. Election. First matches, of course. A problem with this arrangement of setting up the freaking Swiss style tournament bracket is that it is very flexible with what occurs. Why is Mace here again? It reduced the player count to five. Yeah, I mean, opposed. Okay, so they have no reason to not be ready. Uh, Saris, you're launched. Well, you're launching the game. You might want to stop that. Oh, never mind. They're, uh, they're ready. They're ready. All right. All right. They're ready. All right. Let's go. They can't not be ready. They only quick. have one ship. <laughs> Good, we got. Is this best of three or uh one? This is a best of one. Oh, it's All best right. of two. Best of three. Nope. Oh, best of three. All right. All right. Left side, we have a missile orbiter. It looks like. Isn't that Nug's missile orbiter? It looks really familiar. Some accusations coming out the gate. And on the right Funny. side, we pr pretty much have the same thing with a secondary ship. Yeah, there's quite a lot of nukes here. You have a little uh, dummy ship with two booster engines and his main ship, a, um, a missile orbiter or a morbiter. That's going to be fun. Two morbiders. Does any did anybody bring point defense? Uh, no, nope. not seeing it. <laughs> Nobody's taking any hits to the rear. Uh, but it looks like Anthrax's first fall has missed. Anthrax is the only person to have taken any damage, and it looks like they're going to take uh, the nukes hit. Looks like. No, nothing substantial to the actual main important stuff, but a big hole in the armor, which is gonna it kind of expose a control room. True, but his his little uh, nuke ship is as good as done for. Here come the missiles, and rest in peace, little guy. I'd say that was actually a waste of ammo, though. I doubt that's gonna matter because the ship was useless. Well, it's good to get it out of the way now, so missiles don't incorrectly target it later. Keep in mind, uh, both keep in mind that uh, uh, both ships actually have factories, so the, um, they have quite a um, a lot of missiles to work with here. After that update fixing stuff, it made that factories are a very uh, common thing for missiles again. I notice Anthrax is changing his rotation direction to hide his weak spot in the armor. True. However, if you look at a Robo Bunny's armor, it's quickly getting torn away. And here's the thing: he has a hyperdrive beacon, which he couldn't, which he uh, now is unable to probably capitalize without a support. And it seems both of them are going in for a total bear hug. Awesome. I don't think he brought a second ship to jump to, so I don't know what the hyperdrive beacon would have been for. It's probably a. 
Also, one big issue is his armor is gapped, and the little gaps in the armor can be good against some things for defense, but for missiles, the little gaps mean that missile can get a little deeper in and then use its explosive damage to do a lot more damage than it would if it were to hit a flat piece of armor without any holes in it. It's true. And in the Which meantime, Robo Bunny is in the control room. One of his control rooms are exposed, and his missile system is completely uh, tarnished. He's about to lose a control room and a reactor. Yep. Oh, there we go. GG Anthrax. First win out of three. Congratulations. It was a good attempt. If he took out that control room on uh, Anthrax, he could have had a chance. He came a couple armor pieces short of it, though. True. But he's at a very inherent disadvantage having a. Uh, this the gapped armor with all these little holes in it. Anthrax's shields also uh, came in handy at uh, being able to regenerate in time to deflect those missiles and soak the damage. All right, you started the, the same map. way. I mean, oh, it looks like using the same ships. Awesome. The, the at they, well, everyone has to use the same ships. Oh yes, never mind. And it looks like, um, yes, in fact, the small nuker does indeed have hyperdrives on it. Oh, that would explain why. Yes, oh, it would explain. Because that, the, it doesn't have a, its boosters are not meant to uh, regenerate. In order to travel, it jumps to where uh, the main ship is. True. But it looks like Ultraviolet is uh, heading right towards the uh, tiny nuker. Without much hesitation, and the Robunny is far behind him. Seems like a interesting decision. The nuker is a. I guess it could be more vital if it were used later, so it's good to get it out early. True. It's now diving in though, so he's going to take big damage. He's got to fire soon though. Uh oh! Nuke. There goes all that is a mistake. That was a. Now it's. That was his one chance of getting a good alpha strike. A lost opportunity indeed. Now let's see what Robobunny does now that he's lost one of his uh, crucial supports for sudden attacks. Probably would have been good to have it run away or something to have it be used later in a fight. Because now there's, it's not looking very good. True. But with only uh, boosters or reactors, you can only get so far. Well, he had the, he had the teleporting. He had his uh, teleporter connected to his reactor, but his booster wasn't, so that's why. It's and it looks like both planes are orbiting around the Megaroid. They both launched oh. missiles, but neither hit their marks. And here goes the engagement. Robobunny's going to have to rely a lot on making sure that their front isn't taking well, they have to take the damage somewhere, so they can't really... But, like, their their armor is just inherently, like, inferior against missiles. True. And Robobunny's Robo already lost two missile launchers, so he has, to be kind, he has to be pretty careful of what he does here. It's a dangerous game he's playing. There's already a sizable hole in the left side of the armor. For both of them, though. True. But I would say uh, Robo Bunny is in uh, quite inherently a lot more danger. Remember, uh, Anthrax has shields, which can regenerate to keep on soaking damage. Robo Bunny does not have that. And there's already almost a hole in his uh, left side armor. That's... True. And about to... somehow did not break through. Got a lucky, lucky rotation to avoid that. Uh oh. Here come the oh, missiles. No, oh no. There that was a few the game. That, yep. And then goes the reactor, compromising a lot of his missiles. And it means no way Anthrax you can come back from that. Well, it's almost the opponent. This is nothing short of a slaughter. Now it's and just it looks... missiles diving in from behind to go for. The reactor that's very unarmored. And, and there, there we, we go. go. Robo Bunny has been disintegrated into pieces. Congratulations, GG Anthrax. Yep. Good game.
All right. Now that uh, now that Anthrax has won uh, best two out of three, it's time for Blockout and Pies Piers Gem. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. I say Percy Gem. Percy Gem, yes, Percy Gem. Awesome. I, I haven't the faintest. Yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. If you have a nuke like that, you need to defeat it. Otherwise, you're just at a huge disadvantage. All right, Blockout has joined the game. Now we're waiting on Percy Gem. One thing in the meantime is a uh, series. If you want to explain the, the the Swiss tournament style, because I'm sure most people do not understand that. But I forget one guy's ship, and now I have a problem. Yeah. I was so confident. All right, both players are in the are in the match. Now they're just selecting their ships. They're not selecting their ships. I'm assigning. I meant you're assigning them. Yes, thank you. Yes, indeed. Both missile. All right, let the match begin. Good luck to both Blackout and Percy Gem. All right, and it seems that they both have Morbiders, and they both have shields. But here's the, king, here's the thing to notice. Uh, Black is using small shields, while uh, Percy Jim is using a, 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 a quadrant of uh, large shield generators. Very interesting. Also notice Percy Jim is using the uh, spaced armor, which could be problematic. True. It's not too significant of a disadvantage to have your armor like that, but every little bit counts, especially when you're using pretty much the same ship. Meanwhile, they're both uh, orbiting around the Megaroid. Let's see if Blackout uh, decides to make his turn to directly engage Percy Jim. All right, here they come. And it looks like Blackout's turning to get the first shots off. And he does. Since Blackout has better ammo. And Blackout was able to turn to take to tank some of his missiles while turning while avoiding some at the same time. Nice. Now those missiles are kind of chasing behind. Let's see if they die out. If they don't, it could be very problematic. First team just got a very nice shot uh, burrowing his way through the armor. But, it, but uh, Blackout's shields were able to support him. Blackout's having to spin to dodge missiles, which is leading to him taking some from behind. True. And now overturning, which could potentially be very dangerous. Eh, he got away with it. And it looks like Percy Jim is about to run into a whole column of missiles, which has just been chipping away at his armor. He's got a sizable hole in his uh, right side. But it's not next to anything too vital. And it looks like all that weaved armor on Blackout is actually doing him some favors, as long as those shields. But the question is, how long can it actually hold up against uh, Percy Jim's firepower? I think you're going to see Percy Jim's armor not moving nearly as fast now, because the shields are in range. And his shields reach past his armor. It would be interesting to note that uh, Percy Jim actually has four more missile launchers, so he has a little more opportunity to cause some uh, greater damage with them. Even if it's at the cost of less frontal armor. I would be concerned about ammo, though. Doesn't seem like he True. brought nearly as much. Which can be problematic, because it does look like it's a more of a tank out fight, hitting each other's frontal armor and shields. Oh, there's already a hole on the on the left side of Percy Jim. The yeah, armor got broken was, through. Now he's going to have to rely on his shields and turning if he wants to soak that damage. Otherwise, a single column of uh, missiles could do him in. Versus a blackout seems to have a very strong 
front right now. And Purse Jim has actually lost some engines. Well, in the meantime, the missiles chip away at his side armor. Oh, look at that impact. Blackout does have a little bit of a weak spot in front of one of his, one of his reactors. But because of the shields, I don't think it's going to cause too much of an issue. Yeah, in the meantime, when comparing to Percy Jim, his armor has been whittled away, so he and his defenses are quite lacking. And it looks like Ooh. some missiles are onto Percy Jim's rear and are slowly shredding away at his, at his uh, launchers. See, a blackout almost lost a reactor while I wasn't looking. The one I was pointing out earlier has just a sliver of health that could have cost the game. All it takes is a couple good hits on that reactor. There are no shields in front of it right now. Better watch out. It's super. Oh, oh, there. Oh, no. And that's all there it is. Percy Gem wins the first round. Congratulations. That was, a, that was a very close round because Percy Gem was actually almost out of ammo. True. And he and would be and those would have lasted that long if, the, um, if uh, Blackout had gotten enough shots in. That was a very close matchup. However, uh, considering that they were using the, sh the same ships the next round, uh, luck may go in Blackout's favor. Yeah, we we'll might see it for our first three match, uh, three round match because that today. All right. So let's see if Blackout can now uh, fully focus his firepower on taking out um, that spaced armor of Percy Jim. And Percy Jim has to figure out uh, how to get around that thick armor and buy time. I think Blackout needs to find a way to keep his damage more spread out. Because there was a good focus on that one reactor and that's what caused it. Other than that, everything was looking pretty fine. And it looks like uh, Blackout gets the first shots off. But some of his missiles are actually not going in the direction of the enemy. Same thing with uh, Percy Gem, but both end up making contact. Percy Gem has made the better with the first contact and is evidently targeting the left reactor. If you pay attention to the way um, some of their missile shots go, they actually go in a near perfectly straight line, which can allow for um, better hollowing and chipping away of the armor, as shown just for Percy Gem as uh, he's losing uh, some of his frontal armor. I wonder how easily Blackout could win this by focusing on spreading out damage more than dealing damage and then going in for the kill after ammo runs out. This is not looking good for Percy Gem at the moment. Right now he has two massive chunks in his armor, so he's going to have to be careful that they don't go any further than that. And in the meantime, Blackout's shields are providing uh, are coming in handy as they're able to quickly regenerate and uh, be capable of soaking up more damage from those missiles. And now there's a clear uh, there's a clear hole straight to uh, the shields out of from Percy Gem. So let's see if Blackout can capitalize on that. And look at that lineup coming in. The shields are taking Almost damage. Broke uh oh, here comes another line of missiles. Will they break through? Oh, just barely. That's the shield. Separate out. spot. That could have been a very dangerous hit if they all landed in the same place. Also, to note is uh, the piece chunks of armor are actually blocking shields. That's Which true. Could be problematic. Both of the shields came down on the right side, but just barely uh, they got back up in time before anything serious could happen. Unfortunately, they're being blocked by that armor, as you said earlier. So it's going to be um, so it's putting Percy Gem in a more of a compromising situation for what he'll have to do next. In a sense, his uh, left side is slightly compromised in terms of defensive capabilities for a brief moment, anyways, until those shields get back up. Oh, there's some missiles coming up from behind, and they don't deal any oh. significant damage. That He's could have been very dangerous. I'm barely able to avoid those missiles. 
But now that they're coming around, let's see how well he does against them. And they all go into an asteroid. Seems like Percy Jim's on the run there. True. He knows that his arm, uh, the vast majority of his armor has been shredded, and that two of his shields aren't fully, um, are far being blocked. So we'll have to be extremely careful with any more um, direct on engagements. It's definitely one of the close battles. Agreed. A close one indeed. Oh, he spun to swing out the pieces of armor so they're no longer blocking his shield. That is pretty clever. That is a that is a genius move. Now his shields are actually working. And they're no longer blocked. That's one issue with um, large shields is they can be blocked by loose pieces of armor. It looks like Percy Jim is focusing on closing the distance now that his shields are up to full strength. Yep, seems like both of them are shooting the asteroid. Or actually, yep, one just shot off in the distance. Looks like both Blackhead and Percy Jim are going to meet around the asteroid. They're getting into range. See, uh. Well, oh, Blackout's faced the wrong direction. Seems like. Percy Jim's going to get the better of that encounter. True. He's able so to get Very good volleys. Have an exposed uh, some shield modules on Blackout. You also take that chunk of the armor, too. Every little bit of damage you can do helps in the long run. At the moment, it's just buying time. Blackout needs to take this slow and try spreading out that damage with his shields a little more. Because right now he's taking a lot of hits and not landing very much because he's doing the chasing. Uh oh, now he has a uh, clear hole to uh, one of Blackout's uh, engines, so we'll have to be kind of careful not to compromise his uh, his capabilities for moving. Yeah, Percy Jim keeps getting these good shots and then ducking behind an asteroid. True. He's able to keep his distance quite well. Just a battle of attrition now. There's two good volleys coming in from the right side of Blackout. One However, gets both running, asteroid. However, they're quite running quite... However, our person is actually running quite low on ammunition, so we'll have to be extremely careful for what he does next. Those shots he has will have to make them count. Otherwise, oh, Blackout's uh, Blackout. got some good shots chasing after Percy Jim. Agreed. Right? It kind of oh, missed. They, they, the that was a very was... close call, though. If you take a look closer at Percy Jim's ship, some of his factories don't have uh, sufficient resources to keep up or uh, keep producing new parts. Let's see if Blackout notices and capitalizes on this. It seems like he's on his last maybe 10 volleys at most. That could very easily decide this. But Blackout uh -oh. gets stuck on an asteroid with missiles behind him. But it that... looks like uh, Blackout was able to turn in time while Percy Jim not getting the best of that exchange, losing a missile module. And part of one, too. Oh, and another. He's with yep, three exactly. missile modules and almost no ammo between them. That is, yeah, two, three. He's only got three operating factories left. That seems like it's going to go 1-1, one, one, unless there somehow has a miracle. But, but looking at a blackout, he has more than enough ammunition um, in his launchers and storage systems to be able to uh, clean up this uh, job quite well. Assuming he played his cards right. Seems like he brought like 50% more ammo or something, and that made the difference. Unless but Percy Jim can keep dodging around and make this a ram battle at the end with the zone. In this battle attrition, uh, more ammunition for those launchers is definitely going to be coming in handy for Blackout. Now Percy Gem is on the run. Meanwhile, as the uh, Ring of Death sh circle is uh, shrinking, we'll have, to, we'll have to do something crafty to make it a win. Oh, uh, yeah. He only has, uh, like, 20-ish missiles left. That is not looking good. Actually, more than that. There was one factory still operating, too. Yeah, Percy Jim is on the run from those missiles coming in from behind, and on the front, too. 
He's being boxed in. And there goes Launcher. This is not looking good. He almost came. He got pretty close to damaging a reactor. In fact, wait a minute. He damaged the shield next to a reactor, but running out of ammo seems to have done him in. Agreed. His shield defenses can only hold out for so long. Lost all the armor on one half, and all the shields are down right now. Oh. Oh, he just lost an entire missile. Uh, launch and that second. should be... Ooh, that somehow did not end it. Oh, is it? he only had the one shield left. His defenses are as good as compromised. And... There we go. That be... Oh, no, that's that on his last legs. His last right. The last. Somehow not ending it yet. No. Oh, okay, never mind. He just there forfeited. GG. That was a, quite the match. We're up for one more. These are from pretty well balanced ships. Agreed. One has a one on damage one. advantage. One's got the attrition. So let's see uh, if Percy Gem can now uh, switch this match to his favor and pull out a victory. He has to play this carefully. He can't let this let that last match discourage him. And look at Blackout. No hesitation. He's going right in for Percy Gem. I think it's an interesting note that because of how the ship is built, as Percy Gem takes more damage, he can lose more armor and move faster. Whereas Blackout is not as well afforded that because he uses armor to a higher extent and is better protected by his. That is very much true. And it looks like uh, Percy Gem has gotten some good volleys off, uh, chipping away the front section of the armor. However, if you pay attention um, to Percy Gem, that spaced armor is doing him too many favors, as, as um, Blackout is also able to get some good damage off. Already a hole, hole in the armor that's almost all the way through on Percy Jim. It looks like a lot of missile. It looks like a lot of he's taking a lot of damage on his right side, though. I'll quickly regenerate those shields if he doesn't want to lose his right reactor. That is going to be very problematic that could decide this because of how the ship is designed to go once one reactor goes the entire thing goes and that's there we go and that's a win the reactor has gone there up in flames go. gg person pulls out the victory congratulations all right good work All right, uh, let's see who is next on the list. All right, Blaze and Kawa. Nice. Actually, Kawa is occupied for the oh, time being. Yeah, for he's one actually, reason. He's so it, oh, yeah, he's actually. Oh, yeah, he's actually. And that one came. All right, good luck, uh, KMC. I am running into some issues. Hold up. Um, That's all right. Keep on trying. All right, I guess we'll delay this match as well. Oh. Never mind, cool gamer tag. Eno Shade and Toggled. All right, then. All right, Eno Shade is in. We're just waiting on Toggled. All right, Toggle is in. May the best, uh, the best player win. All right, five, four, 
3-0. Toggled, I hope you're ready. Good luck. All right, the match has started, and it looks like uh, on the right side here, Toggle has a very interesting design here. He has a combination of both rail guns, uh, high explosive missiles, and uh, a duo of EMP launchers. And on the left side, it looks like uh, Eno Shade has a, um, a suicide ship compos comprising of a mass amount of boosters. Uh, oh, and there goes the connection. Oh, I'm still here, so I guess here we go. On the, we got the uh, nuke. And we call it the reactor stick, which is a suicide ship that attempts to use the damage from a reactor blowing up to destroy the enemy ship. It looks like it's going to ram straight in with an attempt to damage. And look at that damage. Already taking out the main guns on Toggled. <laughs> yes, Toggled is very destroyed by that. Unfortunately, both players seem to... I've set the rails to the fire at target, or fire at will instead of fire at target. Misfire their first shots. You know, Shade since oh. fixes it and just removes the control. Right Already, down that middle hole. You know, Shade looks as if he's trying to break his record for fastest match possible from the last <laughs> tournament. All right, I'm back. All right, you know, Shade uh, has taken the first win. Let's see if uh, Toggled can change the tides of his fate. Definitely be a difficult matchup because you no know, Shade can just fight with his range rails. Imagine if Toggled rotates quickly enough to spread the reactor explosion. Maybe problematic. No. True. I'll have to play this a lot more carefully. And if, uh, nope. Alright, looks like uh, Toggle is going in. I, do, I was informed earlier that his max speed is about 40 meters a second, which is going to be quite complicated as he'll have trouble avoiding uh, Inoshade's uh, suicide rammer, which can probably break speeds about of 100. Well, avoiding it isn't realistically. The best he can do is mitigate it by rotating. He should be capable of doing it. He needs to warm up he, the thrusters beforehand. He does have EMPs, so maybe he can get a lucky EMP hit on it. May struggle make it with the point defense. Sure that Defense. I think he's running at a very strong disadvantage because of the uh, his use of small reactors, which makes the, the ship a lot more like a matchstick. Is a bit low on firepower. Demir Summer firing off the volley and eviscerating uh, both railgun. Oh, seems like he's almost. That could have just done. The, everything in right away. Oh wow! It was actually able to mitigate the damage. You know, nice work. Like, uh, toggled. The you know, stick she, missed. The shade misses entirely, and he just moves some of the those, but it won't change much. <laughs> the problem is, toggled has lost his railgun. So let's see how well those uh, misses can uh, do their job against uh, the Demeter Summer. It looks like a couple more volleys and wait a minute. You know, oh, Shade only had he can't recharge his railguns once they shoot. Oh, there goes hey, uh... that might be might be the end of it because he can't fire once the EMP hit. He has no way to shoot his railguns, which means that it's just running from there. I think Toggled won that match. True. Let's see if uh, Toggled can now uh, catch up with uh, Demeter Summer, who still is able to fire off his uh, singular railgun. And you only get, what, four shots out of it? That's not going to look very... Actually, two more now. Oh, that was actually the last one. Yeah. That is the oh, end of it. finally turn his shields, though, which is nice. Toggled. Build new... It seems like Inoshe is just running in to end it quickly. Yep. Seems there to be no way around this. He's been caught in a perfect uh, position for uh, Toggle to connect. Next, next time he's going to land it with the matchstick he has. Alright. Demeter Summer has broken free of the uh, lock. 
And if look at Toggled. Oh, never mind. Toggled has taken the victory. Congratulations. All right, congratulations, uh, Toggled. All right, you know, Shade. Let's see uh, if you can get that matchstick uh, to really a uh, to really uh, burn uh, through Toggled's defenses. All right, both ships are in. Let's see how they do. So, you know, she has a very interesting strategy. I think most conventionally people don't have limited function ships that are, like working after their initial burst. So it was very interesting to see. One thing I would like to note about um, Demeter Summer is that I do like how he's uh, keeping his shields off as he doesn't want to burn through his power capacitors' um, batteries as there's no reactor connecting them. Yeah, shields drain energy over time. They're not taking but you have to try and micro them. Unfortunately, you know, she'd failed to do that and but Yeah. But it was that EMP that really uh, knocked out a, a vast majority of his firepower for the demeanor summer. And uh here comes the suicide rammer. You know, she can hit properly this time, brings the shields on and keep it time while it's getting there. Uh oh. Hear it? Uh oh, there goes the rail guns. So, uh, Ogled's SRX executor no longer shielded on the front, so if Enoshid can line up the one necessary shot, it'll work. But unfortunately, all that armor prevents Enoshid from shooting through the sides, which is a problem for him. True, and it looks like uh, Enoshid has also activated his uh, shield systems. Let's see how long they can uh, last. You know, but it looks like that EMP has lost, has done the damage. Yeah, they recently got raised range, so I think they're the longest range weapons in the game. And unfortunately, since Enoshade relies on forward batteries, that will effectively destroy three rails. True, he's lost already half his firepower due to a single EMP. And normally in this case, even a single rail that's not powered will be enough. He manages to break the shields and set a fire but loses all but one of its remaining rails. This isn't looking good. If Eno Shade has determined that the opponent has no fire extinguisher, he should be able to kite while they just slowly burn to death. Unfortunately, Eno Shade seems to be occupied trying to warp oh. it. And Toggle picks up the win. Congratulations. Give this man a round of applause. Or a person. Done toggled. Agreed. What a match. I'm very impressed. I had a, I was in a call with Toggled um, a few minutes before the tournament. I was weary of his success chances, but it's clear that I shouldn't have underestimated him. Congratulations, yes. Toggled. You deserve the win. Always worth joining the tournaments because you never know what happens. Agreed. It's God's material. Anything can happen. Out of next. All right, Mace, a good old um, buddy from the uh, Space Arena Discord. I've seen his uh, ship before, and it'll be quite interesting to see how he uses it against uh, Selfies. Oh, uh, Toggled's still in. Uh, do I want to kick him? Goodbye. All right, looks like um, Selfies' cult members are... Right behind him, supporting him all the way. Let's see how well he does. And yes, I'm calling it a cult and absolutely confirming whatever uh, Silking says. I'm completely biased, and there's nothing I can do, nothing you can do about it. All right, Mace has joined the game. Good luck, Mace. And yes, good luck, Selfes. Well, both of the rail ships which thus far they've been heaving by explosiveness being archer apparently true but if we look and if we look at um selfish ship in contrast um to mesa's ship actually um 
He has a lot of um, a lot of shields, though. The question is, uh, how well can he upkeep them and contrast uh, his self is? And side comments, nice paint self is. Congratulations. Interesting that I see Salus. Salus has is a TV rail. Typically has lower firepower because it invests in the game plan component with tractor beam, but despite that, still has more firepower than the pretty conventional vanilla rail fan from with a True. lot yeah. of thrusters. Six rails to four rails. So it makes is it tighter, I think. They have a strong focus on um, rear thrust. True. Unfortunately, not a true kiter, as that relies on purely uh, thrust. Rear thrust. Uh oh. Oof. And there goes one of his rails. That's not good. He has a burning his, control room his with no uh, fire extinguishers. His storage bay is also on fire, too. Looks like Silphus has caught a. Oh, he had temporarily had Mason a tractor beam lock. And there goes a second volley. Eviscerating a uh, second rail, and that reactor is uh, engulfed in flames at the moment. I think we know what's about to happen next, gents. I think we know what's going to happen next. Uh oh, and there goes his firepower and his primary bridge. Alex casually taking no damage. On his armor. Now, Selfless can really just take his time, do whatever he wants. Yes, and the thing he's going to do is rip right through uh, Mace, or he will do that soon. I'm kind of surprised that Mace isn't forfeiting, given that they have yeah. weapons left. <laughs> yeah, and his primary bridge is down, and he's no position to take back control of his ship. Ah, uh, yes, he has no. Oh, and. Nope, but he does do some damage. Selfez is just buying for time right now. I he's just taking his sweet time. Elif's casually struggling to kill his defeated opponent. Pushing him out to the rod is probably gonna be faster than Bows. True. He needs to get one control. But at least now, a self can uh, probably dictate the pace of the battle at his own leisure. And congratulations, self is. Oh. What that's, happened? That's there how goes. That works, oh, there buddy. He's joined back. It's okay. He's joined back. All right, good luck, uh, Mason Selfes. And I'm getting a DM from him watching. Um, that's the one guy I didn't want to face. Buddy, you're facing the leader of a cult, so I'm not sure um, <laughs> you're in the best position to, to take advantage of any flaws. All right, now uh, Mace on the opposite side of Selfes. Let's see how this match um, play. Let's see how this match goes. Hopefully, Mace isn't too um, what's oh what's the word? Distracted by that first loss and is able to uh, keep his head in the game to pull out a potential victory on Selfes. Anything can happen. As we look at uh, Mace's ship, it looks like he, uh, his forward thrust isn't sufficient enough to keep up with uh, Selfez, as he's only merely going uh, 25, around 25 meters a second, in contrast uh, to Selfez, who can go much faster. Elif's trying the unconventional strategy of not trying to play spot, chatting about it, trying ships to be excised. He wants uh, Mace to know exactly who he's facing and uh, what kind of situation he's been placed in. Like Just so Mace, he can draw out his demise. I feel like Mace knows how she is. With all due respect. Yeah. It's I, the one, he's, he literally told me it's the one opponent he doesn't want to face. But I guess life isn't fair. 
I say let's would drag this out is when it comes to being a cult leader, you want to relish in the glory of the fear of your opponent. And it looks like he's wasting Oof. no time evicting all of his weapons, his bridge, and just tearing him asunder. That is one of the tactics ever. My dear. <laughs> and it looks like uh self has a tractor beam locked on the front of his ship and is just taking him around for a spin, exposing his reactors, and goodbye bridge. I'm not sure why he hasn't surrendered yet though, because he's just like nothing left. He can't do anything. Well, I think that's pretty... Oh. GG. Pretty safe assumption that... Alright, I'm back. All right. equivalent now. Alright, looks like uh, Selfish takes the win over Mace. Sorry, dude. Uh, you tried your best. That will be... Which is Game Night and Ultra... All right. In the meantime, we're just waiting for the players uh, to finally join the game. Oh, a new announcement. Okay. See yourself. All right. Welcome, game night. I'm surprised that self as hasn't ripped on me for calling calling his company a cult, but that's okay. I guess I'm lucky. Accurate. I know. I'm just uh, kind of just having some fun. Right, uh, we have game night here, which we're waiting for the- oh, never mind. Ultra has joined. The Clutch Master is in the game. Let's see how, uh, how he can clutch this time. He didn't? Oh, never mind. Uh, Selva isn't calling me out on, uh, my error. It's Anthrax. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh oh, Ultra has not sent a ship. This is not uh, good for him. I'd like to point out to all the viewers, though this may be considered harsh, an entire month post the ship. Is irritating. Yeah, people like, do, people like to do things last minute, so don't be too surprised. And for future reference, you will be. You're forfeiting if you fail to fit the ship beforehand. Because an entire month would be considered the Ultra 4 is reactively changing ship. I would like to reactively change my ship to a kiter. Oh, that looks that is a uh, quite interesting ship there that Ultra has uh has uh, shown off to uh, the community. Let's see how well it does. A stick indeed, yes. I'm agreeing with King Slime that is a stick indeed. Oh, I think I've seen this one before the tournament. If it was what he, in a practice round, so I think I can confirm that he's not reactively choosing it. Thank you. I have also seen it before, and it was red really stick. fun. Terrible. Red stick. That's like a giant arrow-looking thing. If you look at the frame. All right, both players are ready. Time for the match to begin. Yes, Ultra is using the same ship he was practicing on earlier when people were practicing right before the tournament started. All right. Game night is engaged with ions. By the way, spectacular paint by Spacecast. Nice. 
and it looks like uh, Ultra sort of overwhelming range has uh, taken his position. And let's see if uh, Game Knight is able to turn to t turn uh, to around and hit uh, Ultra sides. Game Knight does have quite a few ex exposed engines, so he does have a weakness there. But I think he's going to be able to get around Ultra because Ultra's missiles are hitting their own. Oop, I dropped my microphone. Excuse me. <laughs> But uh, Ultra's missiles, because of how sharply Ultra has to turn, are hitting uh -oh. us. Game Knight is now um, is now uh, focusing on the rear, and he's locked himself right in. Now he's going oh, to burn over. through the engines and tear him right? asunder. The way it locks in is impressive. That's a nicely built ion ship. Oh, barely. Oh, never mind. He's adjusting his uh, prisms to destroy the bridge. And there goes the reactor and the bridge. There is Ultra's just the one bridge at the very end. Uh oh, I'm, uh, oh wow. that is an upset. Unfortunately, that that's... is why Ultra is called the Clutch Master. Don't uh, underestimate him. He can turn any situation into his uh, favor. He had that one control room at the end, and because of uh, ult, um, Game Knight's lack of armor on the rear, that was a game deciding stake there. As per conventional usage of these missile ships, these sword missile ships, you only need to technically have a living ship. So most of the time they have a control room on the tip of it that um, Game Knight very much missed here. And because of it, you can just have the ship have the back end die, but you still win because the missiles kill your opponent. Actually, a very clever usage of the lights was to obscure it at the very front. Oh! I didn't realize that. That makes that is genius. Yes, this was a tactic that was expected. It was found out with the release of lights, but I didn't expect it to actually be effective. I mean, that is that is interesting. Looking at Ultra, so he's still facing the same problem when turning. His his missiles are catching on his armor, which isn't exactly too good as he's relying on uh, storages. And, and his broadside is getting in the way of his other missiles, so as he rotates, he kind of blocks himself. Agreed. I would say that Game Knight is doing the right thing here. Not, he shouldn't be going for a kill, he should just be bleeding out the missiles. Because once he, the opponent runs out, he's just dead. And he is fast enough to dodge the missiles, and by going in a circle, he'll continue to avoid. True. He's breaking over 100 already on his uh, max speed. In the meantime, Ultra is... Uh keeping his uh, ground with his uh, position. He's trying to turn with his boosters, but having little effect. I think Ultra's actually almost stopped moving for a second, which might be the best move, because the worst thing he can do right now is hit his own missiles. If we're looking at the front of his uh, design here, those PDs are unprotected and unshielded, so for any future battles he may be using, it could uh, be quite compromising. Yes, indeed, Heldra. The problem is uh, how many missiles you do have. You know, with storages, even... you can only do so much. Well, he's not even halfway through his ammo right now. So... I think one, one suggestion is maybe for him to stop firing for a second and wait for uh, Game Knight to actually make contact. The thing is, the Game Knight's never going to commit as long as Ultra is launching missiles. He could bluff and like tell his missiles to stop firing, but is that Game Knight knows that if he commits his eyes, he's never going to well, have that happen. That's exactly what he just did. He turned off his missiles. I think he's listening to us. I think he's listening. We should, really, we should really shut up. <laughs> now they're just going to drive in circles and waiting for the other to make a move. Well, the thing is Please that, don't go on for seven minutes. The thing just is, Game Knight already. can choose to like laze Ultra for Like He doesn't have to ram him. He can just rotate at him and stop him moving. And then just... We'll do ram away. I would say that Game Knight's the one with the almost advantage as, Almost as if someone uh, was listening to us. I feel like they're both listening. Yeah. I think that's the, he's keeping his distance. And Ultra is trying to turn. Not firing. True. I mean, you guys say they're listening to us, but these are pretty basic combat tactics. <laughs> well, I don't know. Anything can happen, Sarah's. They, they, they start catching on once we talk. Power of commentary. At the very least, they should be knowing these things beforehand. 
Oh, this, this yeah, could be... Just yeah, wearing that's... down the shields. Yeah, slowly wearing it down. Uh -oh, Ultra right three more time texting than uh, anything else. Uh oh, with a ship like lost dungeon. With a ship like that, you can't exactly do much piloting. <laughs> yeah, it is true. And part of its main strategy is dying so that your opponent dies because they can't kill the other control room. I feel like this might go till the ring closes. Nobody's making any serious damage. Walter does have to watch out on his ammo, though. Basically, all the missiles that Game Knight dodges is damage done to Ultra 4. Because once he runs out of missiles, he's effectively instantly dead. Yeah. Looks like Ultra has a pause on his firing to conserve all of his missiles to use for later against Game Knight. And Game Knight, in the meantime, is turning to focus his damage on uh, the armor of uh, the Sword of Overwhelming Range. And does take out a control room. I know what to call an engine room. But that probably won't have a significant effect. It's it's not going to change anything in terms of how functional Game Knight is. Make him a little bit slower, but that has been equalized by the armor damage he's taken. It makes him a little slower when turning the direction he isn't turning right now. So it's not going to do that much. Looks like take Game Knight Lost an engine on the other side, but one engine isn't going to do it. True. In the meantime, Gaiani is able to uh, soak the frontward damage of uh, Ultra 4's uh, fire, missile firepower. Even if he's losing some engines, the armor is more than thick enough to uh, hold out until Ultra's run out of ammo. He only has like two or three volleys left at this point. <laughs> yeah, that's... Given how fast uh, Game Knight's still going, even if he's lost some engines, it'll be more than enough to dodge all the missiles. Also, as he loses ammo on the front, he just starts going faster. <laughs> Which makes him harder to catch. The bluffing trick in the first round was impressive, but I think that this is going to occur in the second round as well, and it's going to be a cut and dry win for Game Knight. Yeah. All right. No more ammo, no more missiles left in those storages. Let's see what uh, Ultra 4 can do now. Well, the launchers still have two volleys left. True. Some have three, I think. Oh, no, no, they're all two. No, just two. Some only have one, actually. That still is enough to kill Game Knight. It's just very unlikely. Ultra has to yeah. play this really carefully now. Right, looks like he's uh, bearing oh, down with full armor. And now he fires. Let's see what these missiles can do. But it looks like uh, Game Knight might be fast enough to just uh, put himself into a, into a better position. Yep, that's a... Uh, oh! Uh-oh. Some kind oh, of a reaction, but it doesn't seem like they're going to be able to do it. Fortunately, Game Knight is fast enough that he could probably push Ultra 4 fast enough to then still dodge them. Well, now that uh, Ultra is out of missiles, well, about to run out when those missiles despawn or hit their targets, Game Knight is free to do as he pleases. That's yep, that, that should be the end of it. There's, there's no way Ultra... From here, unfortunately. Yeah, he wasn't able to clutch up this time. Uh, oh, Game Knight has four. Oh, sorry. Uh, Ultra is forfeited. Game Knight wins. Congratulations. Impressive use of prisms by uh, Game Knight. He's not using a. Uh, any. He's only using a two to one ratio on one of his prisms. So all of his ions are actually full strength. Yes, you get a lot more damage that way. It's pretty expensive because it's pretty but because of it, it makes it so Game Knight is more damage efficient. Ions that can match other ion. I think Ultra could benefit from using an asteroid, maybe, to prevent rotating. 
Well, Game Mac would just go around the asteroid too. I mean, it's a decent strategy, but it's, you can't see a ship that can dodge missiles from behind ever having an issue. It looks like Game Knight's uh, first attack is moving towards the rear of the ship. Let's see if he. Uh, I mean, it'll probably uh, be focusing. It'll probably just be running around just to wait until Game Knight ultra, ultra fires off his missiles. He's running circles around him. Figuratively and literally. Perhaps Ultra would have a chance if he can set it so that one half of his missiles fire at a time. It's definitely a hotkey you would want to set up is having based out on my choices. Because like the issue is that he's too consistent with chaos is what he needs. The game night can't dodge all of them. Think all of them on the run. Ultra is getting kind of close to a uh, Megaroid as his game knife. Let's hope they don't get stuck for long. That could be very good for Ultra if he could fire. Yes. And, and he's firing as we speak. Likely to get uh -oh. stuck on that rock. Doesn't, uh -oh. even, doesn't even get the control room for his trouble. So this is a bad position. Looks like Game Knight is able to avoid with his uh, incredible speed. Oh, oh so came so close to dealing good damage. Caught between a rock and a hard place. Now this seems like it should be very bad news for Ultra because he, half of his missiles are ineffective. Yes. Now he can just face an angle and all the missiles will hit the front and he firing. And the best part is because um, the way of his prisms are arranged, he can adjust them accordingly to get himself into a better uh, attack position. I think because he had no rear thrust, he couldn't maneuver properly to do that. And he still hasn't. He's, there's still two control rooms, so. It's far from over. There were definitely some close calls for a game night earlier along that asteroid. Yeah, that was definitely tense. I bet he was punching his teeth with that one. However, it looks like one of the rear shields on Ultra's uh, sword is. Or sorry, his uh, missile stick is down. In the meantime, uh, Ultra has now lo is locking in and uh, starting to chip away at the defenses of uh, Ultra. Seems like Ultra has figured out how to only fire one side at a time. Part of the structure of Ultra is causing Game Knight a lot of problems, but he fortunately just. Uh, still pretty stuck in there, pretty wedged. But hopefully, I don't think this will. Uh, this may not deter him too much. Never mind. There it's out. It's finally out. So well, game night is probably going to be stuck here for the most. Part. Opponent is stuck it's... on the ass. True, but it just takes some. Uh, to take a lot of. Hope it's not firing his missiles at a fast enough rate. When he has quite the advantage. Oh. oh. There is a almost dead reactor that could have ended things. True. There is a Let's reactor see. with a sliver of health on Game Night. Let's see if Game Night can now uh, get it, can now evade those missiles while while uh, chipping away at the back of uh, Ultra Four. Definitely is now protecting that reactor, but is still in an awful position as this ship stuck on the front of him. That came very close to ending for Game Night. He's got a reactor with, uh... Less than a tenth of its health. <laughs> yeah. It's not letting me see the exact health. And the other reactor on the other side is also damaged. That reactor has, uh, 394 health left, so it's very compromising for Game Night if any missiles were to stray there. If he were to get the ship off of his front, he can laze one of the few structure pieces holding the front together and... For one reason or another, Ultra 4 turns all of his missile launcher. He doesn't actually have any point in doing that. Maybe he's having control room issues with, uh... I don't know why he's not firing. He's almost won this. Turning them off is probably the only way to actually get them to stop firing now that he has control over them. The issue is that, um, if 
weapons off, the operators leave, so it's gonna take a while before they get back. Even if he does turn them back on. He... And he just did. He's turned one side of- oh, he's turned both of them on now. But it'll take time, as you said. Game night. Really, kind of strangely, not committing to destroying the front control room. Which would instantly win the game for him, large. Ooh, that could have. This is looking interesting. All right, game nice taking some engine damage, but there is a space where uh, Ultra Four's command bridge is exposed, and uh, Green Game Knight can make use of his ions to properly strike. Oh, where's the? Both of them are at a very critical position. I don't think Game Knight is entirely aware that the whole room is so close to dead by just being removed. Or that removing it would win the game because of the and damage setting. Yeah, it's just the just the one elbow of structure is all you need. Yeah. And yeah, Game Knight win. There it goes. Corner, right? And I'm through four four fit. Congratulations, Game Knight on the victory. That was a very close round with Um how much how little health was left on the I think Ultra is slightly confused about that ending. All right, now that that match is done, it's time for Blaze versus Kawa. A supposedly available match. Hopefully. Either player responding. <laughs> A month to prepare for this, guys. It's your time to shine. Those I should share orange bracket. Oh, oh, Kawa's here. Nice. Looks like, oh, Blaze is going to join in soon. He just needs the password. <laughs> yep. Whatever. That is true. All right, let the match begin. Let's see what they have. I was surprisingly not using his regular wall, but is using a ion ring. And in the meantime, we're looking at Blaze. He has a two, has two ships, a a deck cannon rammer with a uh, hyperdrive beacon, and a similar ship uh, to what we saw from Ka a similar ship uh, we saw in the few first rounds with Blaze as a uh, large nuke nuclear nuke wall. Let's see how he uses that. Yes, with a much larger focus on the nuke ball this time. Before it was 1.2 mil on three. This time the nuke ball is 750k. Also, is fast enough to confirm that the nukes will always be. The warping. Hope oh, Blaze has taken some uh, slight engine damage. And here come the vast degree of nukes. Let's see what a Kawa Beach can avoid this precarious situation. Kawa spreads damage super well. And does not take any damage. <laughs> it may have torn a large hole through a Kawa's uh, left side armor. But it looks like um well that but since uh Blaze's ship has run out of nukes. Kawa can now uh, dictate the pace of the battle as you know, frontal as he has, uh, has enough frontal armor and shields to polish Blaze off. Blaze isn't even shooting his guns right now, which is a questionable decision. There's no He's point. They can't break through those shields. He's firing now, but if we got around the side to that exposed reactor, kind of like there's a small gap around the large shields and the exposed reactor, there's a potential All to right. do something there. The rammer has been destroyed, now it's oh, open, and uh, Blaze yields. Kawa takes the first win. Random deck cannon shot very nearly took out Kawa's reactor, was in the process of doing so. 
I don't think anyone else saw it except for the viewers since they were watching my um, screen. But that was I saw the very right end. I thought too. That I'm was watching. scary. <laughs> I would think it would be nice to see that go another five seconds because if that landed and took out the reactor, <laughs> and very dangerous for Colin. That'd be the biggest upset ever. So, um, yeah, Blaze's ship lives and dies by how effective the nuke volley is. Even if you can't dodge it, you can spread the damage such that it doesn't instantly kill you. And that amount of nukes will be capable of one-shotting anything if it's a direct. So Kawa, knowing this, is probably going to be hiding, trying to play defensively as possible, because once it's dead, he wins. But as long as it's alive, he has a chance of instantly losing. That looks like he's uh, taking his time to directly attack uh, his Blaze's nuke wall. All in the meantime, uh, Blaze with his rammer is trying to head, a, trying to head Blaze, around and see what he can do about this. They're driving that nuke wall sooner or later. Stop it from going off like a chain. Boosters have been activated. Just caught right on the side and deploying the nukes. Oh, there. Uh, oh. He got Fortunately, what, even worse than the previous shot, with nukes you want to line them up and not shoot from point blank range because that means they just scatter across the entire opponent's front. I think it's no matter what, Kala is fast and skilled enough to probably dodge it. Likely, if you were to position the nuke wall to launch them all in front of him so that he runs into him, it might go better, but unfortunately he's not capable of 750 that cannon wall is probably not going to be 1.5 mm orbiter. Nice. Yeah, some of Blaze's engines have been compromised. Oh, he's uh, turning to show more of his sides, and looks like uh, Kawa is taking his time to capitalize and burrow through his side armor. I mean, I don't know if held the pin for long, but the damage is enough to prevent um, those engine rooms from taking more batteries from the reactor itself, which is going to compromise um, the deck, the deck cannon rammer's total speed. I think this is largely it for Blaze. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's just. It's no way really out of that. Is All the a... don't have power anymore because the corridors get destroyed from the inside. So or you're fired off. Uh, really is a very good use of the hyperdrive i would say though in the monster that ship is scary even if it wasn't super successful in these rounds having played against it myself <laughs> yeah in the meantime kawa is now taking his time to burrow away at the armor as those five deck cannons at the moment may not be enough to uh penetrate the shielding of a uh, kawa's ion 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 rammer and there it goes well, there's still a nuke thing sitting in the corner. Unfortunately, you can't do much because there's no ammo, and that's a forfeit. Yeah, Kawa nice is taking the victory. Congratulations. All right, congratulations, Kawa. All right, let's see who's next on the list. It is... That one, KMC. Cool gamer tag. Cool gamer tag. Jinx. All right. And... Slow King has arrived, so I suppose Slow King will go next again. All right. Oh, we're doing an excellent job demonstrating mastery of the game and not just... Went well for his very frightening player, but had chosen something else. Nope. Oops. Cool gamer tag. It's not his time yet. We have to kick him. Or kick is here, so I shall. Nope. Uh... Move cool gamer tag. Yes. Not at all confused. Don't worry, we've confused up this little uh, piece of misinformation. So it's okay. <laughs> Looking with the sleeping and last fortress. 
Right, so waiting on Nick, and then we should be good to go. Good luck, Nick. Good luck, Slow King. Slow King, one of the previous tournament winners, probably one of the highest. See what we got. For Slow King, we bring a nuke. Kiter, no, we can not Kiter, what do you call it? Orbiter. Um, orbiter, Orbiter. Play Ultra and, as well, which means very little armor oh, yeah. maximum. It was like 160 meters a second versus more typical uh, Orbiter. Yeah. And if you look closely, uh, Slow King may not have armor to protect on the front, but it does have a lot of point defense and uh, shield systems, which should help him out against um, Nick's missile arrays. Yes, point defense is a problem, especially when Nick relatively low amount, especially when they're all hitting the, the ship. And if we look at Slow King, he's also a lot faster than Nick, so he'll be able to get himself into a proper priming position to take advantage of those nukes he has. Slow King very nearly runs into a nuke in the forward reactor. Oh, but that line of nukes is going to be problematic. They'll be able to rip right through the armor and, and knock out all those shields, yet they're not down yet. They haven't been destroyed. Oh, gonna hit more new game oh, 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 yeah, that, was, that is a quick and smart play. Yes. Okay, well renowned for his piloting. He uses the momentum of his ships to throw the nukes into the gap. Nick turning off his shields in a panic, probably lost control of his ship there, and is probably going to be eating more nukes soon. That should be just about game. I love Slow King's use of the rotation. Yes. Same. It's just an think that's, a, job. that's a real good pairing with an ultralight nuke ship. Slow King definitely has a very strong ship here, and so unconventional because it's been rarely seen. Is very clearly super effective. And that nuke, um, that nuke barrage has ripped through a large chunk of uh, Nick's armor. Yeah, the Nick's next... not in the best. The next slinging of nukes that Slow King's gonna do is gonna have this huge gap to hit into once he can line up the shot properly. <laughs> and using the momentum to throw the nukes once again. All, all played angles. Slow King. It makes them almost impossible to dodge because there's a nuke from every direction. <laughs> Meanwhile, the point defense is doing its Ooh. job. There's a hole in the front of Slow King. That could have gone much worse. Thankfully, the hole missed his reactor. But he ran into some nukes head on. And a chunk of the glass forge has also been caught on a Slow King's ship, which is preventing one of his shields from actually going up. Actually, two shields. You two Back. Slow King's speed and the point defense and shields, the heat missiles are probably not ever going to be a problem for him, fortunately for Nick. Yeah, aside from that lucky hit earlier, it doesn't seem like... I'm pretty sure that was because gonna... of a nuke as well. Yeah, that was a bunch of nukes oh. I got. BG Slow King ran into. An absolutely vicious display of skill from Slow King. Congratulations on the first win. Yeah, Slow King eviscerates Nick. <laughs> absolutely. It happened again. But, long, but not entirely. <laughs> Fortunately, I do not think Kine, players such as Kine, is going to be able to stop you from trying to slow king. All right, let's see if uh, Nick is able to uh, do a little bit better uh, this this round. Mm. Yeah, but slow king. So, would not want rotating as much in the fight because that burns a lot of his explosive missiles. Low King, um, failing to remember that the main issue with nukes is that they can't aim against mobile targets if you don't position them. So they all miss. Yeah. In the meantime, that point defense just wallows away on um, Nick's uh, high explosive missiles. Only doing the job quite well, actually. Even at close range. Uh-oh, that's not good. Oh, oh well, it's right right through through it. straight to the reactor. Loking cuts off all the resupply of his missiles and destroys three of the four modules. Nick is 
largely defanged, I would say. And ready for a toss. Another brutal toss into the frontal armor. Fortunately, doesn't do much. Okay, just scrapes his armor a little bit. All right, looks like uh, pretty much nearly every missile module is gone except for um, a trio of nukes on the rear, which Loki can quite adeptly handle without problems. <laughs> and I'll just burrow um, straight into uh, the glass fortress's rear and polish up this mess. Seems yeah. like there are no lucky nukes today from Nick. Loki doesn't even need to worry about dodging or anything to polish anyone and just slowly tear his opponent apart with point defense. Yeah, he can take his time with this battle. You know, even once the nukes reload, if they were possible, bounce off the shields. <laughs> Potentially damage their own ship if they're if Slowking was ramming close enough. Yeah, they destroyed the launchers, destroyed themselves. Just do a little bit of damage to Slowking, but nothing relevant. Nick is True. no longer with weapons. <laughs> No fangs left. GG. The prey has fallen to the predator of Slow King. Congratulations. Slow King takes this match. <laughs> Alright, so now it's cool gamer. Alright, alright. Cool gamer tag is going up against the one KMC. Yeah, KMC, good luck. Wonder I'm quite eager to see what you'll be using. I will need a lot of luck because my ship was built in an hour. All right, good luck. A one-hour ship versus a goddamn knows how long. Uh, how long yeah. Long. I do not have any hopes. The power of dream, no, the power of determination will prevent. Will uh, give you the strength to prevail. I'm joking. I I was, do. Don't judge my ships too closely. Should I, should I keep talking while I play, or no. let y'all do the commentary? No, <laughs> As, as funny as it is to the idea of someone talking while they're focus on not getting blown up, that would be nice. So All that, right, good luck. That one came see another user of the warp beacon, whatever it is. All right, he's got a um, nuclear barge. He's got a interesting um, mine and uh, high explosive missile combo on a, one of his ships. No armor. And they got a little, um, a quick little fighter with a, with a hyperdrive beacon. Interesting. So, how I expect this to go because of Cool Gamer Tag's fast rail, very heavy in terms of fire, is if it can dodge the nukes, it wins. If it can't, then it dies in one hit because. Uh oh. Oof. All right. He took out some of the launchers, but KMC uh, still has a lot of firepower. And. Oh, well, okay, look, he only lost two rails. All right. Yeah, unfortunately, that one KMC did not aim at all and lose that ship. <laughs> yeah, and the, those rail guns were sufficient to just rip right through KMC. All he has left is the uh, little snub fighter and that little um, mine and missile hybrid ship. So that weapon, probably won't last. Either. The other ship does not have weapons. <laughs> no, but it'll just try to um, run for it. Fortunately, it will not save him. I think that he's going to be trying to behind the corpse of his second unnamed ship. So the cool gamer tag might make a mistake and go die to it. Dead launch. Or he'll lose the ship oh. as it's fired at. No, he, needs to... Oof. he dodges all the rail shots and is going to try to hide behind um, the corpse of his uh, fallen ship. Let's see how well it works. Missiles coming so it looks like side. True. Missiles have reloaded on the nuke barge. Not impossible that they kill them. I don't expect them, to, but you know, a few missiles to get to the reactor. There goes another rail. Cool gamer tag might be victim of lack of a fire extinguishers. So he has does have eight. And it fires at the fires at the rock, hoping it goes through. In the past, rocks yeah. had surprisingly low distance to penetration, and you could just fire a rail gun. But I don't think a rail fan is going to do much against a rock that has over 2 million health. So, I mean, he can try, but he won't get that far. Just 
Try not to die, please. You have your chance. I said a chance, yes, you have a chance. Fire these missiles into the rock, not what you'll be doing. <laughs> you have a very limited amount of those either. Carefully conserve. Uh, what is, uh, okay, he's just running away from one. He may have lost an engine, but that's okay. More than a few engines. Uh oh, oh, there goes another rail. And, uh, yeah. Oh, and looks like one of his crew quarters is on fire. That's okay. This all? Fortunately, nope. it is not. Do you want to wait to set? No, just somebody kill somebody, please. Oh, looks like um, that tiny little stump fighter KMC is just hiding in the dead husk of the. Move it towards him. He's trying to use it as a. Oh my god. All right, this is, am this is amazing. This is an awesome target. All right, cool. All right, um. Go KMC, go kill him already. He has very little armor. You can do this. I take it back. You can't do this. You're getting eviscerated. Oh, well, there goes the fighter. Oh, but those nukes have launched, though. Let's see how well they do. And they're caught by the armor. Fortunately, not concentrated, so across all of his front in much of anything the fire is still alive though it's just hopelessly spinning and it's trying to ram uh, the one KMC's orbiter cool gamer tag making it's sure important. to destroy the dead new clunk they don't get to fire again and cause him further problems however that snub fighter has just uh used its, used up its last hopes and is now in pieces now it's just up to that um, tiny um, unarmored ship of uh, that one can see to prevail. It does have nice speed though, 130. Taking advantage of being occupied, but I don't think there's a position that will be hiding the ship that allows it to change. Oh, there goes one part of his ship. That's nice not shot. good. Nice shot. And Cool Gamer Tag wins. GG. All right, he's won the first round. Let's see if uh, KMC can uh, prevail in the next one. Oh, shit, I'm getting some battery point. All right, so we're going into the second round. Let's see if KMC can uh, come out on top this time. Good with the microphone, buddy. <laughs> no, sorry, my thing was on fifteen percent, so I had to charge it really quickly. I mean, more than capable. Oh, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. All right. Uh, looks like uh, the one uh, KMC is coming in. It looks like uh, Cool Gamer Tag will most, likely, will most likely be um. What is he doing? Well, I'm not sure how this um triplet of KMC is because the only action that can happen with the warp ship. Is the nuke ship teleports to it, but very clearly it already has sufficient thrust to get to its drives it. Yeah, he's. I think he's stuck. This isn't really good for him at the um, moment. At least one more ports away though. Having technically, I this kind well, of sad match. To, well, just end it quickly. All right, there goes um one KMC with his ship. I mean, the nukes are still there, but his propulsion system is pretty much done for. In the meantime, Cool Gamer Tag dodges the nukes. And he's just ripping apart the rest of that nuke barge. Oh, looks like uh, Cool Gamer Tag is staying his hand at the moment. Oh, never mind, I was wrong. He's ripping it apart. No mercy for, uh, KMC, no mercy indeed. Cool gamer tag is noticeably overkilling the parts he's shooting at. With um, ships such as this, you want different hotkeys for your rail. Cool gamer tag does have, but isn't used that so you can shoot at more things at once if they're at low health. Otherwise, not that it necessarily least... matters, but you should be able to target and then go like that. Yeah, you're. 
Yeah, he really wants to make sure that those nukes cannot um, be a danger to him in the future. And there goes the last one. To be fair, they the are over... the largest threats on the field for worry. True. He has a lot of ammo. I can agree with that. In the meantime, KMC has deployed some mines. I'm not sure how useful those are going to be. So, not like ammo loss thing as much as a time to kill thing. Against certain opponents, it will matter. Could matter. But not in this case. He just ripped call. He just ripped KMC apart. I want KMC strangely silent. I would have requested a rematch because that's a awful way to lose your ship. Yeah, you just got you just got your uh, primary offense stuck on a on a megaroid, and then oh, and then that second ship pretty much just sliced like but like a hot knife through butter. Hiding, fuck, I guess. <laughs> use the armor. Use the megaroid against him. Don't uh, be so confident. You're real. Oh, and that mega rock just protected. Okay, that mega that mega rock just protected him. And and <laughs> fire. Yeah, the asteroids are really strong. Oh, never mind. There was one, and uh, that ship is. I was pretty much done for. It's on fire already. The snub fighter coming in for the save. Let's see what it can do. Oh, now, now Cool Gamer is tagged, turning his attention to the little fighter. Oh, it's lagging a little bit. Never mind. And, oh, God, that was just vicious to watch. <laughs> just ripped him apart and sent him for a spin. Uh, okay, yeah, well, Cool Gamer tag wins. That was hard to watch, but utterly vicious. Cool Gamer tag has no mercy. Okay, well, I'm not sure why you're not responding. That one can't find to request a read. That circumstance, I would say. Try. All right. I guess we're doing a rematch. Didn't say anything. Though. Oh, so a buffer. Shut up, guys. Oh, I'm not sure why you're not responding at all. He's fine with how that one. Oh. Yep, me hear you. All right, just making sure. All right, I could, I muted you because yeah. you were in the middle of a match, so I didn't hear anything you were saying. Oh. Huh. That was interesting. I was saying that I, I, even though it was issues, I expected the game to go the same anyway because the ships weren't very good. So, I no point in really wasting time asking for a rematch. I suppose so. These cats. I, I knew they were gonna fail because they did, they weren't painted, so it means they're terrible. Of course. Yeah, if you don't have the paint, uh, your your odds of success are quite uh, limited. Fortunately, Lunastru D seems to be offline, which is worrying. Oh, well, they instantly. Oh, no. Okay, right here. Idle. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is um this is a Space Cat's uh, first uh modern cosmetic elimination uh rap tournament, right? This first uh, time. Like so. All right. Oh. This is going to be quite interesting to see how he uh, takes to this match. Oh, they're both here. All right, let's go. All right. Oh. All right. It looks like uh, on the left, on the uh, right here, it's, uh, Space Cat using his Arctic ship, which is a um, a, a nuke, high explosive, and EMP missile barge paired with flak and deck cannons. Quite a uh, degree of weapons here. Also gets bonus points for looking cool. Yes, he has bonus points for looking cool. Um, uh, like I'm going to try something and kick both of the other casters. Um, oh, hope you right. don't mind, but you will not be yep, heard yep. for the rest. No, it's just me. <laughs> the space cat is a old player, very good at the game. Goody is 
Antithesis is also good at the game, but is a very new player. He's got known for decent paint, for great paint, and this shape of ships. Recently buffed flag, though there's nothing for it to shoot down. He nukes a pretty good draw, but tearing apart the front of that ship unfortunately doesn't do any relevant damage. And the issue I see is that Space Cat has a lot of spread out weapons, like the two cannons, the missiles, the nukes, the flag, and none of it really can target the same area. Right. Whereas Lunastra D is just going to be shooting and winning. Especially with this position that they find themselves in, just any ramp Space Cat. Because of the relatively thick armor, it is rarely seen on to my own ramp. It is going to just be fine against the missiles. <laughs> and the rounds are being aimed to try and further kill Space Cat sooner. And because Space Cat has all forward thrust, there's nothing that they can do to get out of this. Black, though buffed, unfortunately does not have very high damage and will be getting through those armor. Or will the few EMPs who nukes them? <laughs> Unfortunately, a very swift end to match, taking a little bit because Space Cat's always been fond of internal, understandably. It is not pushing. The room is now burning and is now dead. So, relatively quick match. Next one. In favor of D. Right, so they match up again. I would suspect that Space Cats is going to be trying to go in wider circles as opposed to playing as aggressively as they did against Joe, which I mean is not ideal because. Exactly well known. Unless they get beached on the rock. Please do not get beached on the rock. Lunastro has very little reverse thrust, so if they took long enough getting off, it would have given Space Cat an advantage. Kind of an interesting position. Space Cat, they can't go size because it's asteroid. They have to go all the way over here. Good. Nukes, unfortunately, targeted well to hit the. Um, predictable, predictable flight pattern of Lunastro. The Scion, willing to blaze Space Cat, doing a ton of damage, but still being consistent and slowly wearing away. Space Cat appears to potentially already be in a ram, same as last time. Which, you know, is not ideal. <laughs> and the two deck cannons and flak are still not going to be enough. Despite how impressive and fearsome this ship looks, a relatively low amount of firepower, and because none of the systems are synergistic, the large amount of weapons doesn't really do much. Um, I think Space Cat was hoping to be facing other missile orbiters, or missile orbiters, since that is going to be precedent. I'll probably have more success in later matches, precedent. but is struggling against an opponent that the well flag can't shoot down the lasers. <laughs> And Lunastro disconnects. I am going to say that was a win for Lunastro because it's very clear they were stuck here. Uh, Space Cat could not deal any damage. Unmuting the other casters, they can now join if they will choose. Oh, awesome. I am back. We have returned. I was enjoying, enjoying some curry chicken. Did you miss? Did, did anyone miss us? I hope someone did. Stoke our egos a bit. <laughs> and for the last set of the first round is Plaus and James. Yeah. Hope they're both ready. This is going to be fun for the last, uh, for their match.
All right, Ploss is in. It is plausible. No, please don't tell me you just said that. That's just horrific. That's okay. <laughs> I can correct that. That was horrible, but all right. All right, Z James is in the match. You can't delete the footage. It's too late. Delete? No. Okay, we can't. It's too late. Anything you say is to... It's... No, it's fine. Anyway, set the ready button. Let's go. Nothing better than curry chicken and white rice. I would have to agree. Actually, no, I will have to disagree with that, but I will still say that it is quite good. I had it on Thursday. It was very nice. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Well, okay, that is... I was. That is a very interesting ship there. Okay, dinosaur shaped ship. Or in this. Okay, I. You weigh the I, armor at the front. That's a. A uh, sideways um, Duke or nuke orbiter. Seems to be that way, anyways. Lots of shields and uh, a fair degree of nukes. In contrast to uh, Z Zed James's uh, deck cannon wall with uh, one use nukes. Good off the strike chances then. Can just reload on those. Does it? I, I, was, no, I was looking no, at the wrong ship. I was looking at the wrong ship, sorry. <laughs> Does. Oh. The choice to remove the armor is an interesting choice. I guess it gives the, the speed needed to get away. Yeah, it's like the deck cannons are not going to be able to hit it if it's constantly moving forwards. For the uh oh. Part? For the most part, there goes uh, one shield. And those nukes uh, are caught on the shield, though, but at least they're able to hold out for now. So the, that law he lost, um, what, two nuke launchers? That's not too bad. Two nuke launchers and a shield. I think he'll still do okay. But those EMPs are really doing some damage against his shield. Dealt an okay amount of damage in return. Nobody was particularly benefited from that exchange. The EMPs, though, are gonna. Yeah, the re the reactors are having some trouble, but they should be able to hold out for now. Certain is if they throw off enough engines in one place to like screw up the movement. And potentially throw off the escape. Oh, more shots to shields of uh, claws. And some of the nukes do catch James. The James, though, in a slower ship, is doing an excellent job in spreading the nukes and making sure that they don't hit a concentrated fashion. One thing to concern about is this tactic seems to be working, but it's not dealing damage particularly fast. And that could be problematic if ammo is an issue. And Plasaur, another question. Um, what is it called? Um, not Plasaur. Z James just ditched a lot of the armor to go faster. I think it is interesting. I think that the ditching of the armor was so that he could properly chase and try and intercept the opponent, because you're probably not going to be dodging those nukes regardless. And if you are slow enough, then you will get them lined up and cut into you. Right now, there was a very good cut in that. Almost got to a point of taking out a deck cannon. And looking at Plasaur here, his um his storages and uh, one of his missile launchers are actually on fire. Those are going to be very explosive. Right next to a reactor, too. That's problematic. And, uh, no fire extinguishers. That's not good. No, I, I see some guys with fire extinguishers. Really? Well, let me take a look. There's, there's actually oh, some. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm blind as a bat. There's right? a launcher, though. Yeah, so, down, what, four launchers? Yep. But he kept the ammo, so that's actually quite good, because, unless he assigned the ammo very specifically, which could cause problems. So maybe it's not very good, but if he's running into ammo issues, having those storages will matter. Oh, about to run into his own armor piece, <laughs> slowing down his escape. Coming back goes after two. the entire early round to cause problems for him. <laughs> so the thing that I would say is occurring is that Plaus doesn't have a good platform for launch. Um, good nuke ships typically are very maneuverable and can move in such a way that forces the nukes to hit the opponent. 
Um, Plaus is very speedy and is good at escaping, but because it isn't launching nukes in dodgeable positions, it's not really dealing any damage. In the meantime, uh, Zed James is in a perfect position to soak up all the damage with his really thick armor. And is then the fact that Plosaurus here, um, he can't get his nukes to actually get in the positions he wants them to go in to take out some of those deck cannons and possibly burp the reactor. Oh, that was another decent hit. Yeah. Zed James can do a lot of more turning to try to spread over the damage over a wider degree of area. Zed so James can also have a sizable amount of internal armor that can cause cause issues and drag things out a little longer. Yeah, like even with good hits, great hits like that, you need like four more of them. I don't think the Z James is going to be that passive to let it happen. Oz could probably benefit if they got the chance to reassign crew because they have crew and ammo on the other side, but their current weapons are not reloading particularly fast. Not a great position for Plaus. He loses all of his momentum. Get fired at by the cannon. Fire preempt. Oh, he has not fired though. That's lost a third of his thrust, effectively, a fourth of it, because that's not going to be supplied. He's doing a good job of not letting up on the pressure and let the his opponent reassign crew. Gorgeous. Yep, he's on the attack right now. Looks like he's closing the distance quickly between uh, Plus and himself. Looks like enough um, fire extinguishers were cut off that one of the storages might go up in flames. Yeah. Because fire extinguishers had to come from the other side of the ship. Why is he not shooting his... Yeah, that's good. Why is he not shooting his nukes? Oh, he missed oh, 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 good. Yeah. Oh, there goes a reactor and several more, uh, he's disconnected several engines, which is not good. Finally, fire up the nukes. They are lined up. They're, they did hit the correct place. They took out a deck gun. If they do hit the reactor, the control rooms will go with it. It isn't impossible to win, but I don't think it's very likely. James yeah. was able to, in time, to spread over, um, spread the damage over his, uh, wide degree of armor. But let's see, um... But the problem is, uh, plus the storages are on fire, so let's see if it spreads. He's also putting himself in danger when he's gaining nothing from it right now, because he's not ready to fire. So it's kind of wasting life. True. He's just waiting until he refills. If he fired a couple times earlier, maybe he'd be in a better position, but evidently he's struggling with controls. Launching two more nukes, but, uh, James is able to soak up that damage, and in the meantime returning a devastating, uh, fire of his own. If damage is really starting to end up. Oh, he's lost another, um, lost, lost a shield. And he was, and his, um, two of his nukes just are disconnected from the rest of the ship. Down to four nukes, which is a third of his original power, so. It's not looking very good for him. Good on him to hold out this long, though. I, I'm not sure what his plan is when the rod starts becoming a problem though, because he James can just sit there and shoot him as he flies in circles. That is, if he doesn't run out of ammo, he's <laughs> he's completely fine. Oh, he has a lot of ammo. We can really drag this out. And there goes um, more of his thrust. That actually He's win not... all that ammo you were talking about. <laughs> Lost about 70% about of his uh, total thrusters from this point. And those nukes he launched will not be enough to burrow through uh, Zed James' defenses. Unless they're hitting the center, they're pretty much useless at this point because that's his only chance to get through in time. There's a lucky shot through the center at the control room reactor or whatever. Oh, there goes those nukes and the bridge is on fire. Fire extinguisher? Oh, that doesn't matter. BG. James takes this round. Congratulations, congratulations, James. Oh, well, I want to let me click the button. 
Yeah, it's not. I just lost connection. I lost connection. Too. Wait for you guys. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm in right now. And right, I'm, I'm back. That was strange. Indeed. Yes. I didn't really get that, but we're back in business. I always get a small ego boost, ego boost when it says waiting on other players, knowing that my internet was slightly faster. <laughs> nice. All right. Let's see how Claus does, get, does this time. If you may keep the see. armor. Uh, armor to... Because a problem was the Duke deck cannons kept like reaching beyond the shields, going around. It shouldn't be a problem here. Even with the armor, Plaus can, can still keep a pretty good speed. He's breaking 100 already with his thrusters. If he can get better shots off on... That was the main issue, I would say, is that he didn't line up any of his shots, and they didn't... That is, if they didn't, unfortunately... He could wear down the EMPs first before he makes contact. But if you stall, then you... Start getting a disadvantage because the ring benefits the game so much more. Uh -oh. oh, this is not going to be good for him. Oof. Oof. He just lost. Oh, wow. Just ripping right through a good portion of his ship there. But this He's already the already at a very uh, disadvantaged position with only a, around a third of his strength left. That's. Yeah. We're that sure not 50% of his thrusters left over. In the meantime, uh, Z James has come out of that exchange mostly unharmed, just some armor damage, really. Unfortunately, a single mistake is brutal in his punishment. I think he might have forgot about those nukes on the side. Yeah, they were deadly as a first strike capability. I think because they had so little impact the first round, he probably forgot about them and just went for it. James disconnects the front bits of his armor to try to gain some more speed and catch up to the uh, well, the remnants of uh, Plaza's ship. He doesn't really need to worry about taking damage anymore. Four nuke launches remain. Yeah. We got enough armor on him right now to just bite, just, just uh, wait as long as he needs to. You could probably tell his ship to rotate towards Plaus and go get a sandwich if you need to. <laughs> Looks like um, his own armor um, that Plaus is using actually did um, save, him, save himself a little bit, but let's see how long that lasts. Because now he's caught on his own armor. Uh-oh. Oh, but his armor takes it. Okay. In the meantime, um, Paul is still trying to keep his distance and fire off whatever nukes he can. Unfortunately, he doesn't have much firepower um, to work with here. And that's a win for James. GG. That is it. Good Go game. In. Rest in pieces, Plaus. Oh. They're readying up. They're both done. <laughs> oh. And tracks. Crazy jam. All right, next. All right. Can you interesting to see uh, how Anthrax uh, fights off against uh, Percy Jim. Which, oh, uh, James is still in, by the way. All right. He's gone. I'm assuming that they didn't leave. Anthrax is here. Oh, crazy Jim. And not one to respond to Discord, but arrives sooner than Anthrax. Um. Congratulations. This is an interesting matchup because both of these players are ones who won with. One with missile orbiters and shield, large shielded missile orbiters at that. Um, 
someone someone was saying that anthrax's paint is similar to mugs anthrax steals paint unabashedly um yeah that was me i i call i, I said that i had my suspicions it's it's a similar ship undoubtedly but it is not a stolen ship. okay so all right I'm pausing for a paint. second to okay. show the bracket he re rearranged the placement of fire extinguishers and now it's different I mean, yep. when you reach perfection, there's not much you can do. You know? I guess that's right. All right. We should be ready. I mean, everyone's ready, so I'm not sure when the game's not starting. All right. So, I back up. Game. All right then, ultra. All right then, Prism's missile orbiter versus Anthrax is ultraviolet. Let's do this. Interesting to note how um, Anthrax, uh, in, in contrast to Prism's gem, isn't using spaced armor, even though they have uh, the same amount of shields. Yeah, spaced armor is better against non-piercing weapons, as far as I'm aware. No, it's it's better against non-explosive weapons. Because explosive weapons get into the gaps and get more damage. Whereas others are less effective at thing because their angle needs to be narrower to get through it. So Anthrax, I would say, has the slight armor advantage here. True. Both have the same level of firepower, though. 24 launchers each. I think, actually, Percy Jim has more total armor, like, health. Yes, Anthrax has more reverse in exchange, so it will depend on Anthrax using his shields more effectively as well as positioning, whereas Crazy Gem will be trying to win sooner and outlast his opponent. First Gem did get out, get, 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 Gem did get some nice shots off though, tearing um, some near um, holes through Anthrax's uh, armor. And it looks like Percy Jim is trying to turn to try to negate, trying to spread the damage over a wider area. I wonder Texas if the tool shield. armor difference will make a significant impact. Texas shields are already damaged. One of them's down as armor in them. Crazy Jim has effectively still taken no damage as Anthrax, though Anthrax is a lot closer to taking it. Yeah, now his shields are uh, are are exposed. So let's see if any uh, missiles are able to break through the defenses. You can see how much quicker uh, anthrax missiles can shoot through the armor because it's less dense. Yeah, but it still looks like anthrax is closer to taking real damage. And if we look in contrast to the way the missiles fly, in contrast to Percy Gem and and uh, Anthrax, um, Percy Gem is able to fire his missiles in a near straight line to be able to get some better penetration. In contrast to per in contrast to Anthrax's firing, which is spread over a wider area. Yes, it's the case that Percy Gem is probably microing his missiles while firing them, and if you do that, you can tell them to stop firing so that they can build up inside. Yeah, that seems like what he's done right now. Actually, both of them have done that. Like, we would just be out of range. Uh, that's probably a more reasonable explanation. Um, Anthrax lost most of his front armor, but is doing a better job using side armor to make up for it. And corner armor. Fortunately, not a trick that will continue to last because it died. But his Anthrax is also lost. Anthrax has also lost two of his launchers, which is going to be quite interesting. The firepower is being slowly whittled down. Oh, and, and there goes... There just the went a couple of oh, fusions guts. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Oh, okay, well... Oh, not I a fusion. Oh. Is that it? Anyway. Um, still firing missiles. It's very difficult to see to whose missiles belong to who. 
Seems Let's like see. Anthrax is struggling a little bit. Oh, that's. Yeah, it seems like Percy Gem is gonna pull ahead. Yes, that additional thrust is very hard to make of in a way that would let you win. Because of that, it makes it basically makes it so that Anthrax is using a cheaper ship. For all intents and purposes. Yeah, good job surviving currently, but run almost completely out of armor on his right side. The shields are not com coming back up fast enough. I think he may be forfeiting. Seems like Percy Jim almost ran out of ammo. No, no, he had some left. Never mind. Almost. He was very close to running out of ammo. Closer than Anthrax. I do know that that ship has of Anthrax's has low storage. They're both not high on storage, so <laughs> it is, I guess, technically possible if you have a very tanky ship to just outlive them. Yes. I mean, ideally, you want to kill your opponent rather than stall, though. Because stalling will leave you damage, whereas they will continue to just be full health as they try and kill you. It is a solution, but it's not one I think that either of them are in touch. <laughs> also very unreliable in tournaments because then you encounter someone that isn't low ammo and you're you're just gonna lose. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I think they have about the same ammo. No, hold up. Crazy Gem is doing a good job with his positioning, like the last round, where he has gotten three volleys off, whereas Anthrax is only getting a portion of one. Clearly, he has practiced and experienced this ship, this ship of his. Missiles do make their way to behind him instantly. Oh, lost two. Instantly proving wrong what I said, losing a third of his firepower, potentially more if the fire doesn't go. There's fire extinguishers at the very least. But that is a huge blow. Um, Anthrax definitely has the advantage now. He also lost another missile module because it got cut off due to a corridor getting destroyed. It is unfortunate. Might be able to hot fix it if he not too busy and good at it, but I don't expect it to happen. Well, he, he, he can't because there's just no space for the door. He can't build the door, so... Oh, okay. The, sure. It's 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 a structure now. Yeah. The fire got out of hand. Some lovely holes in the front of Anthrax, but I have a feeling because of that firepower difference, you're going to see... Anthrax, take this one. Yeah, not only is the firepower like a huge problem for obvious reasons, over, it's like it's even worse because of the large shields where you need that burst to break through them. Unfortunately, Crazy Jim is just like denied that. Anthrax getting some good missile lines. Unless Crazy Jim just goes through the side and directly damages the control room. It's not an issue if you go around them. Oof. That control room is at what? Two thirds health now. Very good line of missiles from Antrax. One of the shield breaking through. The gym's front looking a lot worse for wear. Both of them, really. <laughs> Missiles are just straight on the rock. That's always in. Anthrax lost the shield, but it doesn't look like it'll matter too much. It didn't even lose it. It just turned off for. Because of their proximity to the reactor, that isn't really a problem. Yeah, yeah that's what I meant. Oh, that is, does he have stood? Oof, he yep. got both control rooms. Snipe both of them. Nicely back to back. Done. Nicely done, Percy Jim. Yeah, after the first one hit, I think he would have had to start turning stuff off, too. So, that's a...
is a rough way to go. <laughs> yeah, that is that was a crazy both at once. Less than a second in between. And even if only one went down, because he would lose a lot of control points, he would have to take a lot of stuff offline while getting shot at. It was bad news all around. Amtrax is the to be knocked into the bracket. Middle section of the bracket. Fusion is coming back. Awesome. Yep, I'm definitely gonna be support. I'm definitely gonna be coming back. Hoggold versus Salifs now. Hoggold are up next. All right, here we have the uh, the cult leader versus the underdog. Let's see if Tog can pull out a victory against uh, Salifs. It'll be Toggle's uh, second. He lost his first matchup, right? No, he actually won against Enoshade. Yeah, because Enoshade had the uh, suicide. Oh, suicide oh, that's shoot. right. I remember that. That's been the biggest upset thus far. It's certainly a little bit surprising to me at the very least. Yeah, that oh, EMP that really murdered Enoshade's rail strategy. Oh. Hoggled is incompatible. Both are incompatible. What happened here? Um, Walt decided to update the game. Awesome. In the middle of the tournament. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, I guess Good. I'm going to fix it. Um, I wasn't sure if it would be a problem or not, but apparently it is. I need to update my game. Give me a minute, please. Uh... <laughs> God damn it. Um, you guys can look see what our update now. is. I'm going to have words for him. It's a patch. He's impeccable. He fixed the crash impeccable. when switching away from a resource trade tab while it's still loading. Yeah, but god damn your timing, Walt. There's Why only that? one thing in the entire update. Usually an update has all that stuff going on. That's amazing. It's, it's strictly necessary, I'm sure. We're going to interrupt this tournament if you didn't save us. We interrupt this tournament to bring you our uh, regularly scheduled programming with updates. Woohoo. Thanks, Volt. Thank you. Everyone, update the game. Go as quick as you can. All right, let me join. All right. Muffin, pretty sure the password's the same. Yep. Right, me and, K me and KMZ have fixed our games. Woohoo! Getting on toggled. My money's on toggled. toggled. Sorry. My money's on toggled. You always got to go for the underdog. <laughs> yeah, he has to clutch. All right. I don't know. Salus is known for bullying weaker players. A dozen members in this cult. So let's see how he does. Well, he doesn't have their support here. <laughs> His numbers advantage is meaningless. The power of determination, people. All right. Um, so so Self is a TB rail fan versus um, Toggled's multi-purpose ship. I guess, I think. Yeah. Let's go with that. All small reactors. I have a feeling this might be a one shot. Depends but, on where it hits. Them. I don't think that at any angle, Salafs can break through all of the defenses. If he's directly from the side. All right. I think the a main perfect issue, shot. I think the main issue is that Toggled can't deal any damage to Salafs effectively, and that's a huge miss on the rail. Oh, and, there goes the rail guns. Wow, and that's then Salafs is just like he can't be landed a shot at this angle. Be over. He is wailing on toggled. Oh, he just ripped right through his missiles and uh, took out one of his engines. 
Toggle's already calling it. Bounce wasting yep. no time. Going in right for the kill. Absolutely ruthless. Notice how he has rails directed in different parts of the ship. Was that purposeful? No, it was just in delay. Never mind. I thought he was strategically having one half pull, well, one half push. That's very hard on micro, so not something you'd typically bother with. And that's game. GG for Stalefuzz. We got one Let's more. Toggle the clutch up. All right, it's the under. All right, come on, Toggle. Be the underdog we need. Toggle's gonna win. Preemptively <laughs> saying GG, probably expecting him to not do much, like he, as he did last time, unfortunately. Don't get a detox, uh, off as for his chance at winning. Oh, this time, uh, the armor, armor worked as intended that time. I think he's manually time. driving it because he noticed he's firing his rail guns when they're not pointed at anything. <laughs> uh oh, he's turning. This isn't good. Oh no. Oh, there goes the railguns again. You don't want your rear-facing ship uh, towards a uh, barrage to a to a barrage of uh, railguns. He actually has decent armor on the rear. His worst his worst armor is on the side. Yeah, but those shields came in handy at last second. Even though we only lost a launcher. It's worth noting that this is part of the reason why huge thrusters are really bad against tractor beams. Is if they're not warmed up and they have to constantly react, they just can't deal with the turning at all. Sailfez, absolutely no mercy for the underdog. He tried his best. Well, that was brutal. That was, agreed. That was that was just brutal. Absolutely vicious. A, a mauling. More like a snack, honestly. <laughs> a, a light little feast for um the future opponents. Right. right. Game night versus Kalanick. See if they're both um around. Excited to see this match. Two ion ships, one of them with nukes. It goes. In game night with the absolutely zero rear armor might be problematic, but we shall we shall see. Well, he can just dodge the nukes if they're like behind him. <laughs> I think uh, game yeah game that probably has the uh, I think game that has the superior speed over Kawa. Turning their ions real quick. There's 20 for Kawa, and 16 for Game Knight. Yeah, 16 for Game Knight. But Game Knight has much more efficient damage, I would say, because of the number of prisms. So I think he without large. Somebody would have to do the math. Yeah, I think he actually has a slight advantage. Because uh, Kawa's running on, what is it, I think 4 to 1? Yeah, he's running on 4 to 1. Which is, you take 75 off, then you take another 75. No, excuse me, you take a. Um, I forget the exact math. Someone else can do it. <laughs> the issue is that the nukes, the nukes force Game Knight to deal with them. Unless he gets a marvelous angle. He's oh. Uh oh. And he's got he's a very strong ram. He's burrowing through. Oh, it's only temporary though, but he's done the damage against um, 
his that the armor. That would have been much worse than it was. Uh oh, that's not good. Oof. Oof. Oh. Oh. Nuke shot, indeed. That would have been first. very close both ways. Only around, like, two seconds away from destroying Kawa, but then got torn off. Only to lose to the uh, nukes. I think it would, um, game that would have benefited from having some kind of like cheap netting to catch stray missiles and nukes. It doesn't weigh too much. Yeah, the nukes are a very good utility. They are a wind condition in and of themselves, and they force um, Game Knight to move in undesirable patterns for him. I wonder if Game Knight will target the nuke launchers. At the moment, he's just fully chipping away at the front armor here. I imagine he's trying to, at the very least, because it's like you can't really get through the shields anytime soon, and the nukes are going to be a consistent problem until then. Yeah, they're not going to run out of ammo too easily. Oh, there goes one of the launchers. Two. So he's doing some uh, damage against them, but uh, more nukes are coming in as we speak. Largely bounce off of the opponent, though. That's a it great like angle, that. though. I agree. Kawa got himself in a good, uh, in a bad position against Game Knights. It was only temporary, though. Oof, Kala, probably showing a little bit of an experience with this ship, is over-rotating and allows Game Knight to get in a hugely advantageous position. No relevant damage, only lost a thruster, but it's still, the gap there is a huge problem. Game Knight needs to take, a, take advantage of the fact that when he over-rotates in one direction, he's probably going to over-rotate in the other direction to compensate, leading yeah. to a vicious cycle. And then more thrusters for Game Knight makes it so that he can take advantage of that. Looks like Game Knight's getting back into the proper pin position and is whittling away on the shields. Let's see how long they can hold up, of course. Those nukes have probably... Use a... His frontal armor about to fall off. Nearly didn't fall off. Yeah, oh, yeah, a lot of our frontal armor has just fallen off completely. Oof. Fortunately, catches the nuke on his thrusters instead. Oh, the ar look at that. The armor is temporarily blocking uh, the ions. So very tense battle. Oh, in a bad position here. That is not looking good. However, um, game that ions can be adjusted though, so let's see what he does. Oh, yep, that frontal armor of uh, Kawa is completely gone. Now he's gonna slow, he's gonna just chip away at the shields until they break, which is about right. Oh, yeah. big shield oh, loss. He lost a shield. Oh, it does a does A nuke. Oof. Oh, it only took <laughs> one. The it only took nuke. one. The random nuke two times. The random nuke saved the day. Just GG Kawa. Perfect spot. It threaded the needle. It did. It definitely did. This was a pretty intense match here. It's looking like Kawa oh, might have been out to lose for a second until that nuke. <laughs> All it takes is one. If we have slow king and cool gamer tag. A glorious match, one of my favorites thus far. <laughs> I think that yeah, if, definitely save the day. I think that if Game Night plays ideally, then he can just win through sheer firepower. The issue is that the nukes very clearly come in randomly from the sides.
Walt finds the mid-tournament update very amusing. Thought I should share. Nice. The Slow King, I can see him in a different call. Because he's updating. And there he is. Well, everyone's in the game. Time to wait. All right, we got the ship cool gamer tag used to defeat me versus Slow King's notorious nuke throwing ultra lights. The combination of point defense and um, those all those heavy shields should be well should do some work against all those uh, rail volleys. In the meantime, oh, that, allow, that uh, actually did not do as much damage. Oh, oh, oh. Just rip through um hat like. Half his point defense systems. The nukes did not do too much damage, but this positioning call was in right now is not very good and probably very difficult to get out of. Only one one well landed shot would kill Slow King, but because of how maneuverable his ship is, seeming like point defense might end this. Point defense might actually destroy um, Cool Gamer Tag. He fires off his rails in uh, vain against a um, Megaroid for whatever re for whatever reason. I think he's trying to use knockback to try dislodging himself, but it's not working. No. Yeah, this looks this looks like a unique ending, showing the advantage of having so much thrust. Death by point defense system. You can even just turn and show a nuke and probably end it right here because um, Cool Gamer Tag doesn't have the reverse thrust to get off the asteroid. But I guess neither does really Slow King, so. Yeah, he doesn't have reverse either. It's a very gentle tickle to death. A slow and excruciating um, way to die. Things that fun for the whole family. Just watching your enemy get ripped apart slowly and painfully. Well, one bridge left. Let's see how long it lasts. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Sarah's makes a good point. Thank you, Cool Gamer Tag. Can you not target the uh, point defense? Point defense is not targetable at all whatsoever. So we Did just have to wait until it hits the reactor okay. or control room. Whatever. whatever that's going to be. The control room is getting damaged now. So. I thought, didn't point defense used to be targetable or am I tripping? I don't think so. I don't recall that being the case. Oh, I thought there I remember it Finally defense win. Ball being a thing. Only took a thousand years. All right, Slow King wins the first match. Let's see if Cool Gamer can get his revenge. He manages to stay out of the pin. He didn't manage to uh, land a decent hit, so. But that hit didn't really do all that much, honestly. Only took out the armor, didn't even take out the nukes on the side. All right, so let's see how the first volley of uh, rails do against it. They do pretty well, actually. Weak shield, but it's looking like things might end the oh. same way. Oh, they were caught on looking to just shoot himself. So oh, just ripped right through the center of him. All right, because he was so close, the point defense couldn't really do much, or much of anything, really. Shitty ram. All right, Cool Gamer did um, pick up the win. Let's see if uh, 
Slowking can have it have a fair you know, to the thing. It'd be quite the upset if Slowking loses another. You always gotta watch out for any any frail max for anything can happen, and because they're so fast, really, um, you may not have time to avoid them. All right, let's see if we can get out of the uh, this Slowking puts up the shitty ram. Slowking keeping his distance, he doesn't want the same thing to happen like last time. Oh, uh, temporarily caught on a uh, mega roid. Even though he doesn't have reverse thrust, he just using the strafing thrust from having all those forward engines. Oh, rip Ooh, right. that was his right that side. That took a lot of uh, stuff, and another but not actually too damaging. Uh oh, but those nukes might be in a good position to hit the engines. Oh, oh just barely. Looks like yeah. Oh wow, what an upset! That that's a that's a way to go out. Indeed. I guess this kind of makes up for Slowking um, extending his. Uh, yeah, it's revenge his... karma for that tickle diff. Um, karma, one hundred percent. I swear, I remember someone using point defense yeah, wall. Epic. Yep, Slow Kings, you're in the what's it called? Loser break. Oh, loser. You're down there with me. Technically, it's like the middle winner's bracket where you've won once, lost once. It's kind of strange. Oh, so they're three. Well. So, like, you get to go to another lose to go into the true loser's bracket. Um, If you lose three times, you're eliminated type thing. That makes sense. Mr. D versus Z James. Okay, so, um, for reasons, let's have Space Cat join. All right, why not? Welcome back, Space Cat. So I'm busy. Oh, we got S. We got Z James. Z and James. They have shown up. Space cap ready. Save us all a precious 15 seconds. Let's see how what? long this lasts. All right, space cat and Luna. Let's see how all Actually, the flat when, when Space Cat was playing, um, I didn't see that one. Did he win that one or lose it? He lost. All right, that's what I thought. Oh, Luna's having some connection issues. Yeah, Thankfully, not. This terrible. is the game where both of you are gone. Oh, okay. Yep, this is the game where you can't participate in. All right. Is it? I'm just... All right. So it's the two of these um, people. Luna Stro D is in a good position as was last time, where Space Cat's 12th flak can't do anything. Um, Luna Stro D, knowing 
guessing correctly that there would be a lot of missile orbiters put a ton of side armor on this ship, three layers of it and such, and is largely capable of ignoring the missiles, especially when they're in such a small amount. Effectively, Space Cat has two modules as opposed to the six that missile barges typically have, so it's not nearly enough to break through even the rear armor. Today. It's inconsistent and unhelpful. Um, Space Cat has actually overtuned their energy draw, I would say, because they can't support all of their thrusters at once. Though they have been on for a pretty long time, so that's pretty decent. Um, Space Cat already lost the nukes and missiles. Have to be careful of that dead piece, the nukes might be a problem. But Mistro seems to be in a good position. Fortunate. Donastro D supposedly has a good connection, but unfortunately suffering from it right now. Um, the ions are being aimed pretty well. I think the Lunastro is doing that the entire time because typically aiming ions is not something the ship can do well. Space Cat doing a good job to try and last longer, potentially get the nukes in a good position to be firing from, at, from behind. But unfortunately, it seems to not be mattering right now because Lunastro is very carefully moving Space Cat. Space Cat, last hurrah, trying to push with boost forward. I do not think it will be enough because the huge clusters are consistent, last longer, and it was uh, turned into rotational rather than whatever the additional linear force is to push him, to push Lunastro back. Control room vulnerable. Internal armor holding up for now, but it will not be enough. And that is it. Lunastro is moving on. And Lunastro, please stay. Hey, the other two casters. Talk now. Should I rejoin? Yep. Um, well, actually, considering that Lunastro seems to be having connection issues, that might be better to not. I might kick you again. Is all. Okay, then all I right. won't join if I'm going to kick again, then. Where's, um, where did uh, Space Cat go? Um, Space Cat lost. Oh. Okay, so Both of them? It is games, yes, whatever. Um, at least... Wait, did Space Cat lose both already? Um, Space Cat was demanding a rematch. Because the clear loss wasn't clear enough. And so they got their rematch and instantly lost that one as well. Alright. Fusion is sitting this way, understandably. So it's kind of an interesting matchup. For the longest time, um, ions were the close quarters specialist weapon, and deck cannons largely replace that niche, I would say, because they deal so much more damage at close range. It was kind of interesting, and they're pretty, really good at breaking through shields, which will only be boosted by the new that I'm sure that James will be using. Great effect. I'm honestly surprised Luna didn't target the nuke launchers, hoping for a chain reaction off the start. Or didn't, like, try and dodge or anything. Yeah, those left some pretty big holes. But it seems like with the ramming, maybe maybe those holes won't matter? I... Strangely to me, um, Z James chooses to disconnect their armor and isn't really firing back. I think they win in a head-on confrontation, so I'm not sure why they would do that. If they get around this side, though, this can be... Their guns are taking forever to turn, though, so... The chain is very bad at turning, that. even if they have high damage. <laughs> they missed that chance. Luna lacks any, like, proper ramming forks, so it seems hard for them to hold on to one position, which is kind of vital for an 
Eye on. They had some, but unfortunately were very quickly sheared off by the nukes. They're kind of getting down to one of the uh, deck cannons, though. Yes. James is, barely doing, did out. James is doing a good job using their thrust to try and prevent that from happening positionally, but they are yeah, very clearly taking damage. Yeah. They're getting cut right in half. They lost at least half their thrusters right there. Almost cut straight in half. Yeah. Notice Show D, notice what's up, oh. is using their ions to aim and eviscerating the functionality of their opponent by cutting them in half. So they might get flanked now and then it's all over. Yeah, that is... Who's out of sync? Luna? Likely Luna, you know. They said their connection was good when they signed up for the tournament, which was a requirement this time. Really having issues. What's up with that? Oh, they cut. Um, those are two halves that could flank, though, so... Um, there won't be power to the control room on the second one. And the oh. crew have left the deck cannon, so those won't be firing. But this is a very good angle for the remaining half. They... There actually there is power in the control room. It's just that there's no crew. They're having crew priority. I think I think their crew must have got caught off in the explosion or something. Yeah, I think that Z James is making the accurate move of trying to just win with their remaining half as opposed to fix the other one. They are running yeah. out of their pre-stored ammo and now are forced to rely on the actively forged stuff. It would be very useful for them. Oh, they do have their second half online. It's back online. Oof, nice. I don't know why the crew just walked away from the control room for a bit, which is problematic. <laughs> but those are two kind of self-sufficient halves. The control room probably has a what, like four minutes on it or something. If um, C James can get all the cannons to target the shields, I think they can break them. But that time limit is that window there is running out. Two minutes is all over because they they got guns and everything, just not doing anything. Also, note they're manually controlling their, uh... Oh, they gotta watch out. If a deck cannon gets through a hole in the shields because of the ramming and hits those ions, it's over. I think that the structure that Lunar Strody has is very much preventing that. Like, you'd have to break the shields to damage that structure, and that's just not happening. Typically, it's yeah, a concern, that would... but not here. You'd have to get a very... The only place that can happen is a very unique shot on this from a very difficult side angle. Oh, Lunar Show D doing very well with their heavy ion rammer. Mobile prisms, I'm impressed. Hip type I love personally, though I'm not. It's very cool to see them win. I love ions. It's always been my favorite. Sadly, they reduced the range to what, 300 now. Yeah, that was a buff that was given to them on the basis that they were weak and underperforming, but with the addition of large shields, it was a indirect buff, and they were nerfed accordingly. They returned to the same power. It is also the case that E. James is relatively low on firepower. I'm pretty sure the deck cannons can win in this straight-up pushing match, but we were not given the chance to witness that this time. Yeah. It should be just about the end once they get a shot on that control room. Where it runs out of power. The power doesn't end the game. It does in different game modes, but not this. Yeah, and there's also still like two minutes left, so. Yes, minutes left. Uh, Z James not forfeiting despite saying GG, expecting them to lose. Well, I mean, there, there was like left in terms of power on the control room. There was quite a bit left. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. Round one to Lunastro. See if there's any strategy changes. I'm I'm kind of surprised that the armor was just disconnected so early on like that. I'm not. I wonder what the thought process there was. Yeah, that. It seems like every time they come into a match, they disconnect the armor, no matter who they're fighting. <laughs> it's for decoration. Yeah. 
Like, I don't need 200k of my ship. Like, alternate way to do it is just build their armor into thrusters or something, if you want the speed. Or firepower. Firepower is always... It's hard to match just killing your opponent. <laughs> Even with the armor, I don't know how much of a difference they'll make. The nukes do damage on one side, but mm, I mean, it is pretty weak on that side, actually. Fortunately, I don't think that um, James is capable of actually punishing that. Though the nukes didn't really help at all there because they all hit the. Um, unaffected part. Yeah, in order for... Oh, he dropped his front again. In order for the him to take advantage of that, he needs to get around the side to where he can kind of wedge a shot right past that uh the that engine block and toward that control room in that back corner. Oof. But that's asking for a lot, especially after <laughs> that explosion. And it's just a flaming... Even flaming almost dead before... That control room is right about to burn out, so it's about to end. Yeah, and all those deck cannons are now stuck trying to fire through the armor that was disconnected. It's about... Rain... 200 health left on the control room. No 100. Yep. Left on... <laughs> now it's zero. James is not... Robo Bunny and Blackout. Is there an updated bracket around here somewhere? Yes. That Luna took out. Took out. Um, what was the name? East Kit and uh. Um. Yeah. Good showing from. I think they were one of the higher seats. Not mid or low. <laughs> I declare you... myself low seed. Unmuting fusion. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Not going to forget the bracket this time. Nice. You can see up and people are been determined. It off preemptively. Funny should be showing. Keyword is should be. It says they're joining, but they could be updating the game as such. Probably, yeah. Oh, they're here. Awesome. Finally here. Woo. Readings. Let the match begin. This is actually a matchup that Robo Bunny has been in, <laughs> where it is be trying to use the jump tech to hit nukes in the opponent's face and in with the rest of the missiles. Have these players matched up before? 
No, um, that's the function of this Swiss style bracket, is that no players who fight each other for the Swiss section of. It is interesting to see how uh, Blackout is going to take on uh, his advantage of uh, Robo Bunny's spaced armor with those uh, triangle pieces. Because he certainly has enough firepower to easily break through it, in contrast to Robo Bunny, who may have to um, quickly use his nukes for that first strike to burrow through that armor. Is the nukes, like, even if they break through the armor, like, you need a lot of firepower to break through the shields. And Blackout has proven themselves a very competent pilot in extending the lifetime of the shields as much as possible. Robo Bunny has to watch out for long range missiles hitting at uh, the nuke. Problem for Blackout where three missiles took out half of two modules. And one entire module. Or two and a half entire modules. Ooh, that was a decent hit. Oof, yeah, that's... Blackout has lost all but um two of his missile modules. Blackout has only four fire extinguishers on the entire ship. There's a lot of fire going on. Yeah, it's. I think that may be a fire death, even if it's not like gonna outright end the player. That is looking... Honestly... Looks like they're about to lose another segment due to fire. Because their fire extinguishers are distracted elsewhere. Yeah, it's also burning through all of his uh, storage base as well. Or at least a good degree of them. Really unfortunate. It's, um... And killing crew. Fire Actually, it seems like... There might be a fire extinguisher guy... Nope, I thought I thought the uh, factory was gonna get saved, but then the fire extinguisher guy walked away. And it looks like Robo Bunny um, was delaying his missiles so he could um, fire them in a sing in a straight line to penetrate um, better through the armor, which seemed to have worked pretty well. Yep, Blackout's about to lose another chunk of uh, missiles. Lost to a fire and a poorly managed uh, fire extinguisher. Yeah, he only has uh, three missiles left, and one of his factories is already on fire. This is not looking good for Blackout. Robo Bunny firing his missiles again in an attempt to get into a straight line for better penetration. So let's see where he hits this time. Oh no, the ar the damage instead was spread all over the armor of uh, Blackout. Not sure where he's targeting, but all right. Yeah, fire's just completely taken over. Blackout's about to lose another module. Yeah, that fire's the, spread to the fire extinguishers. They keep working on fires closer to them, which are not what are important. And everything's burning. Let's see, got about three seconds left. Oh, there it goes. There goes all of his weapon systems, and there go. And Robo Bunny has taken the win. Congratulations. I still think the blackout, <laughs> despite me saying it and them immediately losing, I still think that their ship, as long as it doesn't lose the module, more than capable of dealing with armor with warp from Robo Bunny. I happen to agree, but now they're at a they they only need to they need to win twice and can't lose. Yeah. So they're at a big disadvantage there in terms of winning the whole match. 
have to be very careful to lose any pulls. Can't get unlucky once. Because they already got well they can't get unlucky twice. They already got unlucky once and now Uh oh, Robo Bunny has lost uh, two modules already. See if they have better fire extinguishers. It appears they do. Oh yeah, they have a uh, they have about a uh, six Push eight this. remaining actually. The problem is, is the one of the burning missile factories, you can't walk to it because the corridor was cut off, so it's going to blow up. So they're going to lose another. That is unfortunate. How many more that takes down? Or if it removes the control room and shuts their ship offline. Or they're not going to move and just take uh -oh. more missiles to the back. Dude, they're busy charging up with their nuke ship. Yeah, oh, missing. there goes two more modules. There's Oof. only um, about like uh, two more left, really. Oh, Those they actually did land good hits. Oh. Oh, wow. I thought that was going to be a miss. Well, if the fires burn down there the rest of the ship, that was definitely a worthy gambit. But Blackout is about to... Uh... I think this is a race to death with fire, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Blackout's about to lose a reactor. But Robo Bunny's a medium reactor. is about to blow. It's on 200 health. And... Thing is, Robo Bunny can't move Kaboom. because of control room stuff. Oh, the the medium reactor has just stopped um, burning at 67 health, but that's about to change in a second. The reactor is uh, ex perfectly exposed, and both reactors it's... explode. GG blackout. I know what. That was a very interesting round with both people having big losses. Yeah, as you can see, the um. That little sh the little ship with all the nukes actually came in really handy for Robo Robo Bunny. If they had piloted to prevent their stuff from chain reacting, they would have been in a very good position. I think they need to take like consideration into how their ship chain reacts like that. Yeah, it's definitely an important part of missile orbiters and just key missiles in general that you have to consider that the factories and ammo stores and launchers all explode into one another. And though you can make your ship denser by putting them adjacent to it, it still makes it so that you take significantly more damage than you need to when any part of it is deployed. Both of these people are suffering from that. Chips. <laughs> Alright, Rubble Bunny is moving in to attack uh, Blackout. Let's see if, um, if that one that's supported ever going to come into play. Hope that they have better micro so that they don't have to like completely abandon their main ship while they're telling the nuke ship to fire. True. They should try giving like orders or something. I don't know. To run while one ship is busy. Well, the issue is that these the nuker doesn't have consistent thrust as the initial energy you start with and nothing else. So you have to always like carefully manage it such that you don't waste it and it comes adrift in space. Oh, they oh. I go several of his nukes. They're launching Oof. towards Oof. Oh, but they catch his own nukes though, that's not good. And there's that the is... mist. That was a gamut that did not pay off. For the outcome of this match. Well, it might still pay for itself if you keep wasting missiles on it. Like, it's either already dead, or it's going to keep avoiding missiles indefinitely. So that's like well, five volleys. Dead. Five volleys of missiles for something that pre prevented no threat. In the meantime, Roll Bunny is uh, back in action. Well, when he wasn't really doing anything the entire time that his ship was dead. I guess he was microing it and such, and letting the other ship be. So at least it wasn't punished this time. Yeah, right now they're just, uh, just circling around the Mega Roy, waiting for um, somebody to make their next move, really. Who attacks first? Engine Blackout's trying to get closer to Robo Bunny, but they're 
hiding for one reason. Yeah, everybody is able to keep his distance uh, quite well. Well, I'll be for now at least. The issue is you don't want to be chasing because your missiles just won't hit the opponent. If they won't hit nearly as effectively and consistently. Everybody got a nice shot off there, uh, chipping away at the armor. At least they're flying in a relatively straight line, so they'll be, they'll be able to penetrate much better. In the meantime, um, Blackout's missiles are just, um, they're just flying away away from Rubble Bunny. Hitting rod. Yep. Yep. Yeah. We go actual damage. But Rubble Bunny will be able to spread out the damage at least. The issue is that, like, no matter how well Robo Bunny spreads the damage, they don't have a generator like Blackout does with their shields. Robo uh, Bunny really needs to focus on a good hit to the good. rear. Oh, That's almost a, size a, a large engine there. Oh, is he gonna hit behind? Oh no. Oh, oh that's, that's not good. devastating. Say goodbye to one of the modules, or... Two of them. Three, two uh, of control them, room. And a, few, and, and a few engines. Now it's offline. <laughs> uh oh, it's, that's not good. And the reactor's burning. But not enough to make a difference. In the meantime, uh, Black House just soaking up the damage thanks to his shields, which are coming in quite handy. Yeah, this last volley might end it because he can't move. Never mind. Nope, the armor just, just this, soaked it. This one, just, this one might know. Here it comes and just rips right through. And yep. GG. Turns out having a mini war pod is very not good. Well, I mean, not in this case because uh, all your some of the nukes missed and uh, your own little ship caught the nukes. So, yes, in this case, it was a gamut that didn't have. Not if you don't use it anyway. The nukes are very, like, they're more effective if they're on your main ship, honestly, because of having the micro everything such a pain. It seems to be the case anyway. Because on that other ship, you gotta you gotta pay for the hyperdrives, you gotta pay for the control rooms, all the crew and everything. Versus if you just stick them on your already working ship, you only need to pay for two crew each, and then the launcher. Yeah. A shade and mace in it. Shade. Maybe they're updating. Those. Uh, mace went offline, so I'm gonna try to ping him. Hopefully he responds soon. Oh, we got Eno Shade. I think he probably just went offline as he think as he probably thought he wasn't gonna get another match, but that's okay. Um, uh, unfortunate. I just disqualify someone like that, but I mean, I guess so. I'll give them. Should we give him like minute. two minutes? I'll give them a minute. Oh, let's just put that match for later. All right, we'll save it for later then. The Ultra 4 and Blaze 580. <laughs> Right. Well, Blaze is here. Now we just gotta wait for Ultra. It'll also be offline. Right, you guys know Great. how the tournament works. So, should we just put Blaze versus Inoshade? 
Oh, well, that seems to be the case. Yeah, we just kicked, just kicked Eno Shade, so I'll we'll have to call him back. All right, now Selfes is blaming me. I'm just, I'm heartbroken. Well, you didn't. To be fair, you did not specify that you're still in the tournament today. Thank you, Saris. I appreciate that. All right, Eno Shade with his matchstick <laughs> and rail, alpha rail because it can't fire more than four. Yep. Wonder if Blaze could benefit from uh, not firing all their nukes at once by having them split out. Definitely interesting. Um, you know, Shade and Blaze both appear to have, like, 750k single-use kamikaze ships. So it will depend on you know, Shade killing the main body with the deck cannons, I would say, with his matchstick. Or just shooting at it because he's closing it at some angle. Of four shots. Oh no, that's such a frightening noise. Oh, everything goes up on the line. Oof. And that's dead. It took most of his it took a lot of Inoshade's ammo to do that though. And his matchstick yeah. is out of rust, I would say for the most part. This is a very unusual battle. <laughs> the matchstick still has plenty of thrust actually. There's only one shot left on the uh, Oof. rails. It's in the way, it's oh, in the way. Get, getting blocked. And that's game. You know, Shade can't kill that without killing his own ship. And it doesn't matter anyways. <laughs> that is a very... It's <laughs> slowly rotating. <laughs> You know, shade with a very unconventional ship choices. He's got two single use ships. Wonder if Eno would be better sending out the matchstick first. I think that Blaze could probably win with just his front half because he can just like kill the rail ship because it's fast enough to escape, and then just like survive the other one. I think he can just tank the four shots, and the rail ship's then useless. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't even need to kill it. It's just gonna. I think this is typically why you have like sustained ships being a larger or more common. Most part, as opposed to these very single use ships that Blaze has one of, it has two. In particular, when you're, when you're using them, you don't usually use two of them because when you mutilate someone, there's typically like a couple shots left needed or something, and you need to be able to deal them. Yeah, exactly. Whereas if you just have like a limited amount of stuff, it just doesn't work. Like they can just survive, and by surviving, you lose. Or if they have like a pea shooter that can just run away and hide forever, you can't really ever end the game.
plays using the nukes on the super fights. That's another choice. I guess Inoshade is occupied though, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Yep, one volley away if you can actually shoot. <laughs> Ooh, for oh, they're at a quick game. One of the games ever. Alright, so we're gone. Um, and... it was just the two, two of us. Um, up Is... next is fusion walk off. Yeah, I'm not sure where he went, and give a reason why you're disappearing. But whatever. Whatever. Nick versus that one camp. All right. He's about to face the yeah. most menacing ships in existence. <laughs> yes, it is just you versus. Is that the last thing of the day? Um, there's one more after this, but then yes. Look with your unnamed ships, right? <laughs> yeah, unnamed, unpainted. <laughs> oh, yeah, the unnamed ship one and unnamed ship two and unnamed ship three. Yeah. <laughs> I found my actual ship files after the tournament started, so. To mute you because oh. right of course okay so this is an interesting match because with a very conventional well mostly conventional missile orbiter a little bit long on the armor i must say nukes are very defensive with the shield looks awesome then you have that one KMC with the very work in progress ships. <laughs> and I mean, technically, if the nukes line up, it will one shot. It's just that Nick is probably going to be both spreading the damage or dodging some of them. So I'm not sure what that, that KMC's plan is here. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I'm voting for him, betting on him. Tell him that. <laughs> Well, let's see what happens. One KMC is just kind of hanging back with his ships, not charging up the FPL or anything. Maybe he plans to stall and his teleport away. I want to feel Hyperium he has. That one KMC also doesn't have the tech where you have one. All of those nukes are good. <laughs> Well, I guess he got lucky and got some of the nuke, but that's still like a huge amount of fire. <laughs> now his ship is got his main win condition is got I guess it can teleport away. It doesn't need just I I had forgotten so nicely done. I just turn around before it's an issue though. Not sure how that one KMC managed to lose part of that ship. Activate the mine. Serious as it is, that ship is half of that ship. Is and Nick can just stay out of range and destroy the nuke ship. It would have needed to teleport closer with the ship over there. Missiles are now taken out. Not they were gonna do literally anything anyways. <laughs> I 
Unfortunately, the hyperdrive beacon was off. They have inconsistent crew. Those are some scenario nukes that just flew. And it did teleport close to it again, but it lost its movement function and can no longer move by itself. So that is going to be it. Unless nuke Nick does the very worst blunder imaginable. Worst possible choke I would have ever seen if he manages to live. <laughs> oh, no pressure about that. <laughs> More nuke sitting from nuke. From Nick. Ah, that's. Doesn't have any other parts of his name. Nick. 45. Nick 2345. Apparently, that one KMC has assigned some of his crew to retrieve nuke ammunitions from space. <laughs> of the option. And he dies. So that is... Of two. So, and then there's the next one. <laughs> so hopefully that one KMC will drive his ship in front of Nyx instead of just to the side of it, because it needs to be in front of it for the nukes problem. If it's just the side, then the nukes will always like just miss and never have a direct to be directly in front of the ship's path. If you want the nukes to be And I'm not sure why that ship is so far away, I can't do it. Just assign one of your missile launchers. Target this instead of the over wasting ammo, but I suppose microing a little bit easier for me. So I think for some people to do it. less. One KMC is in an interceptor out, moving forward in a threatening fashion, but it's not in an interceptor out. So if he launches, fire at will. Yeah, they're not aimed, none of those are going to hit. At least before he got the nukes last time, but oof. Now he's gonna be pounded by missiles the entire time as he's facing and trying to wait for them to load. At least he isn't dead this time. That's rapidly. <laughs> better better start warming up the hyperdrive and teleporting away <laughs> in time. That's such a cool effect. <laughs> so there's actually a tech you can do where you have two hyperdrive. One of them is inaccessible. So you tell your ship to jump, and then while the hyperdrive is warming up, spinning up, the other one doesn't warm up. So half of your hyperdrives are ready, or all but one of them are ready, and then you turn the other hyperdrive off and instantly teleport. Oh, I didn't know that could have checked. Very cool. And by doing that, it allows you to instantly teleport instead of waiting for it to charge up. So it's an interesting tech that will probably not come up. <laughs> but it is something that is possible to do. And is pretty neat. If it's not in this. That one KMC is hiding, trying to stall, I suppose. What stalling would accomplish? Missiles are always going to kill you at range. Wait for the of death to kill on it for you. I could see as a possible out mines being launched for close that then pass through the shields and then detonate because that is possible to kill people and has killed people. But the chances of that actually working are slim to none. <laughs> Because you have to time it really precisely. Face it and for people's move. <laughs> that is true. Hard variant. Hurting you.
AMC, putting his ship that just has two mine launchers. Four, don't underestimate four mines. Mines are technically the most efficient damage dealer in the game. Getting out nukes is that they have to hit like half their shots, which rarely happens. Fortunately, that one KMC is still not positioning properly and all of his nukes missed. The added speed that Nick has, probably doing, probably assisting. Um, it appears that the second unnamed ship was potentially a distraction to get the unnamed ship one in front of Nick's class fortress. Doesn't appear to be in the right place to launch the mines though. Oh no. Oh, it's not gonna do. He's dead now. Unfortunate. I think that is gonna be it. <laughs> Nick. Very likely moving on. He does manage to launch that last volley from a correct position. If he had more nukes, it would have just shoot straight through it. Fortunate to see that miss. Alright, so. Hope he's not busy swearing. Ah, uh, damn it, there, there. there. <laughs> no, that's expected. That's good. I should honestly. I, I, my ship doesn't have the, the nukes hotkeyed, but I should honestly have hotkeyed them in the middle of the game. I mean, you it's, had enough time given the, how far away you were at all times. Yeah, I probably should have. I didn't think of it. Or always use manual control while I was approaching to avoid nukes firing badly, but. Yeah, I feel like nukes, I personally think the nukes are one of the most demanding weapons functionally used. Second to tractor beams, I would say, where you must target them and you must micro them. <laughs> if you want them to be effective anyway. Because if they, randomly, if they randomly fire, they sure, sure they might hit everything, but it's not going to be consistent. And you want them to drill to opponents, which requires aiming. If I had my ship files correctly, I would use my uh, my ion tractor beam for this tournament. Ooh, that sounds interesting. Yeah, just should have found it before the tournament started. <laughs> I found it thirty minutes into it. Something. It was a little too slow for today's meta, so I don't know if it would have done well anyway. I don't know. One one way to find out, and it's unfortunately too late for that. Like, it would have lost to any of the missile orbiters. Yes, that is the unfortunate thing. Is it's a good testament to how powerful they are for viewers who are looking to get into the game. Might be a good um, example to Walt that this is very powerful. The overtuned. Air quotes, might it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... Uh, House with his nuke platform, very unconventional, but I love how it looked because it's so unique. Versus Space Cat's also unconventional, but consistently, as per his design shaped missile, I don't even know Ooh. what to call it. <laughs> A segment of flak got taken out. Yes. Um, I, despite flak being buffed, I don't think it's capable of shooting down nukes. Much is. <laughs> with nukes, it's largely dodger tank. There isn't going to be shooting down at them. Especially once they're going full speed. Yeah. Like if, if it just out of the launcher and you got 10 point defense, you'll probably get it down, but. And that's if there's only one. <laughs> yeah. Once they're moving, they're going. Yeah, it's kind of amusing. I mean, kind of unfortunate that Space Cat. Didn't match up into any of the missile orbiters because I feel like that would have been his most optimal opponent. But that's that's the argument for being a generalist first and foremost. Let's 
Let's see. Plus is kind of ramming. Uh, well, if you ram, you would want to ram, I would say, because if you ram, you manipulate your opponent. Oh, they hit themselves. Those, Those weren't going to hit anyway. Yeah, they but. all missed anyway. <laughs> Ooh, Flack is dealing damage. Flack does have the unique property of having instant hit scan weapons that can instantly target anything. So that is a very good aspect of them here. Yep, that new candidate. Nicely done from Space Cat. One of. But I'll, I'll drop the head. Yes. Very cute, by the way. It's got teeth and everything. How much more interesting to see something like this, like a minimum level of work than like the pure black or pure white ships. <laughs> you call me out? <laughs> you specifically, but also yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was very unique with my naming. <laughs> yeah, I named ship. I named ship one through three. Automatically named. Neither of these That's opponents, fun. neither of these players aiming their nukes. <laughs> Both missed. Guys, uh, you gotta aim your nukes, guys. <laughs> you need to. Those do appear to be hitting some of Parasaur. Really. Off a single, like, few thrusters, anyway. I'm not sure how Space Cat went with this before, like, getting lucky with Black, which is what happened last time. This could be problematic if the nukes blow up and, uh, lost his face. Oh. Yep. That back reactor changed to the front. That is a quick match. Space Cat moves on. That's probably going to be the last match for today, unless Ultra 4 or Mace show up. I don't expect them to show up. Um, I'll play a game in the meantime. <laughs> sure. Hold up. Can change these ships out. Okay. See so what I. Do, 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 do. There we go. I can't remember what this ship is. I think it's a missile over there. Ah. The missile over there. I have so little protection though. <laughs> yeah. It is it. It's very ultra light. I hope it goes fast. I hope you can stay out of range because I'm just gonna chunk that front armor of yours. Oh, I bet my missiles are on the wrong firing mode. Yeah. That could be very problematic. Auto firing them. Oh it's that was actually just clicking. Oh, but... yeah, the wrong, that is definitely the wrong firing mode. Yeah. That's what I was checking. 
Are they not gonna hear? No, missiles do not home. They are not fired. They're not aimed at a target. This. Hmm. Have a problem now, buddy. <laughs> yep. There we go. Are they gonna aim? Oh my gosh. Wait, no, they're actually aiming. I think I got them doing something now. Hope I put enough ammo on this ship. <laughs> I ship getting away from me. It's a very speedy ship design. Unless I run into this asteroid. <laughs> yeah, that would be a great idea. So I was actually super interested in participating in this because the ship of mine can supposedly beat missiles pretty consistently. Not super consistent, but it's possible. But unfortunately, I had nobody to help me host, so I just had to sit out. Because as far as I can tell, this ship be has is capable of beating everything else it's currently. Maybe with the exception of Blaze's new grammar, or Eno Shade's new actor grammar, all that. I feel like the ship's like your go to when it comes to the ship tournament. is my favorite. By far my best one. Imagine most of the viewers that are familiar with it are sick of seeing it because it almost appeared in every player highlights. What's not to love about good things? Ooh, took some damage there. Oof, I thought that those shields were already back up. What's that? Um, almost took out some shields, not quite. Oh, you did take out a large shield, which is much damage. It's kind of funny. Like, the speed is probably going to make you harder to deal with than other ships facing. <laughs> That asteroid. Oof. That hit him down myself. Yeah, I did. That's the. No, not the. No, race, race. I'm not going to win this race. <laughs> but thankfully, I don't have too much important over there. If I can keep landing a couple more hits Oof. right in there. Oh, not worth the investment. I get that. Yeah, missiles lining up is a little bit silly, a little bit suspicious. Here. How's my ammo doing? Actually, I have plenty of ammo. Bro. Did I remember fire extinguishers? Wait a minute. No, I think I did. I think I did. Just making sure. Damn it. <laughs> Almost, almost. I don't think I have enough though because they, I might lose a module. I actually quite like this ship. I didn't think it'd do so well. Building, also fighting something that effectively counters. I wouldn't take this as the best benchmark. More than capable of lasting life. Yeah, and it's very high. It's pretty much assumed that you'd be missing most of the shots and to stay out of range of some tankier ship because it has a ridiculous amount of ammo. Like, all the armor wasn't trained it, traded for firepower or anything. It was traded for ammo. Oh, my. Yeah, this I is have, like, two, like, I think, what? Oh, I'm not. A... Why are my missiles shooting out to the side like that? Come on. Image. Oh, I like this. I like this. Oh, barely not. That's disappointing. Any serious damage? Actually, yes, some serious damage. 
gun series. Major. <laughs> Off of my front. Why is part of your ship clipped into mine? Ooh, that's pretty nice. That was a convenient thing. I think I'm running out of space to run, and this entire ship is built around speed. Should have entered this into the tournament if I had found the file. Oh, well, I think most people are excited about your unconventional. <laughs> yeah, it was an attempt to make something interesting. I honestly think he might benefit from letting me break you in half so you can quarter me. Potentially. Potentially. Need to take damage. I mean, or I have to ask why, because I say the least. I kind of screwed up there. Good job not chaining, though. I would have killed other players there because of how I set up internal armor to stop that sort of thing. Yeah, I'm always focusing on internal. I think I lost too many launchers, though. Only have four left, so I think I've lost this. You have control room issues? Something going on? Yeah, you just randomly sniped one because of course you did. Uh, wait, wait. Um, I don't have enough missiles to do anything now. Mostly because I can't really run anymore. Guys, don't tell him. That my blasters are off and that he's running away from me. I was bluffing. Wait for it. Hopefully I can land some cheeky shot here. Thing is, I have a lot of exposed vitals right now, and nowhere to run. Where to run is very melt pit. Yeah, getting around this asteroid is getting me far out. So, like I said, scary melt pit. <laughs> I honestly should have run out further last time instead of losing all of those launchers. I would have been better off that way. Because now I can't get through the shields anymore, so... Unless I get some lucky angled shots, it's... Pretty much guaranteed to be over. But it's a fairly resilient ship. Yes, it is definitely a lot sturdier than I would have guessed with guarantee. Yeah, I can't get through the shields. That's pretty much it. I would have been targeting the main control. Since Why you I? randomly got the other one. <laughs> Where is that control room? Oh, I see. It. I was actually kind of targeting that area. I was targeting um, the reactor in front of it. I targeted that controller. Maybe I would have been better off. Somehow your ship held together by one yeah, thrust. It's pretty interesting. <laughs> Did anybody else show up yet, or were you just? Um, Ultra Four does not appear to have showed up, and Mace does not have an opponent. <laughs> so obviously, it's... should go against you. <laughs> it's that's certainly one of the ideas. All right, I'm gonna call it though. I'll figure out the arrangement with Mace later. I'll end the stream. So thanks for coming. Only the first half. The second half is on the 27th. Be there. It's at this. Bye-bye.